Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? I'm back. So, today is going to be the last stream in the input device saga. And I've left some stuff downstairs. I'm going to have to go and grab that. So, last stream on Windows, last stream in the input saga. And after this, we're going to be doing something else, which is going to be super cool. We're not going to do any operating system stuff. I think we're going to start some UI after this. Um, I just saw the chat open up on the screen. Hey there, Ransel. Hey there, Egotist. Welcome, guys. Good to have you both here. Um, how, how are you both doing? How are you both doing? Um, right. I was slightly unprepared because I've been doing some stuff with a baby just, just literally before. Then it's going to grab my headphones. Let's get my big glass of water and open up that window. So that'll be, I'll be back with you two seconds. Radio, let's go. Soul phone, starting soon. Lied, no start. Yeah, I had to do a quick sudden change of the baby's nappy, so I was a bit unprepared. I left these downstairs and my good old trusty glass of water. How are you doing? Not so red. FDA zero. How you doing? It's been it's been a while. How you been? Yeah. When will the baby learn C? Good question. Currently, no, uh, there's been no luck on that, but I'm sure he'll come around soon, you know, baby's first language. Right, it's cracked open that window. Oh yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm good. My baby, I learned to see myself. Oh yeah. Downsy, how's it going? Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Today we just uh, went went around the uh, Ramo, Ramo, um saw my wife's mum for a second, and she's helping uh, basically sort out some clothes for us because my wife's ordered some clothes and they're just a bit too big, so she's so she's getting them all tidied up. And then we went around to the butchers, bought tons of meat, bought like. So much meat because we're having like a barbecue the weekend. So got that all in the freezer. It's lovely. It's gonna be awesome. So much food. Yeah. It sounds like such a like uh, a crazy way, you know, to say it at like the butchers, you know. FD Zero is Henry's baby. <laughs> yeah, so check confirmed. Um. Yeah, today's the last day on Windows. Everyone is, everybody say yay. Last day on Windows. Hurrah. So, gamepad support on Windows. What does this mean? Well, apparently there's three different ways of doing gamepad support.
Right. Oh yeah. Now let's go get the webcam sorted out. Ah, uh, it's a problem with dongles. Too many dongles. All it, all it takes is you kick it, and it's like, eh. Uh. Huh? You just can't see me. That's the thing. Where's the? Eh. Come on. Oh yeah, deactivate, activate. Off and on again. Oh, yeah. Thank you for picking that up. Right, I guess we've got to go over that again. But yeah, remember, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what I'm talking about here. This is stuff I just heard third hand. Um. And uh, yeah. So this is the OG Windows driver interface. Apparently, X input. You got direct input which is the newer Windows driver interface that got deprecated, if, even if that is the correct term. Um, and then there's raw input, which basically like is like it sits underneath. This is from what I've heard, um, direct input. Um, and then like this one here, like hid, like the raw hot like you basically read it still goes through the kernel but comes into user land and you kind of read back the the packets from the actual device and you kind of have to reverse engineer it or see what other people have done and figure out what they are check like other um, open source projects and see what they are but, but basically you need to sort of um so direct usb well not really direct direct ish usb read write access um, to the controller and parse the packets right so it's kind of cross-platform right but not um, cross-device so if you want to fully support device properly you could do it's basically right you're in like driver and user space um, and there's kind of reasons why you want to do that because maybe the controller interface it doesn't support the features. So, for instance, this uh, PlayStation 5 controller, um, it has bells and whistles, right? Not quite literally, but has a touchpad. It has this sort of sense vibration thing. It has uh, these adaptive triggers, which you can like change the force on them and everything. Um, you know, so it's got quite a lot of features. And if you can want to You've either got to use some official like SDK, or you have to, uh, if such thing exists, or you have to um, reverse engineer the USB thing and figure out how, how it's done, right? So those are the options. Um, what's the name of that font? I don't know. I can quickly have a quick gander, but I think it's just the default one unless I changed it. There you go, Cas Cascadian Mono. Ah, uh, Incos Incons Consolata is what you maybe want. That's another good one. Or Liberation Mono, you know? Yeah, Ikea. Ikea chair and Ikea table as well. Very good. Very good. So, Basically, like the problem with X input I heard is that it I think it's I think it's limited to four controllers. I think. Right? And then I think and obviously like the problem with this one is that it's deprecated. The problem with this one is that from what I've heard from someone, uh from Mr. No Idea, who's here, is that with the 360 controller, I'm not sure about the other controllers. But for some reason, these, and this is what someone got to try out, these two analog sticks apparent, or the analog triggers are, are on a, a one dimensional value. So like this one is negative, for instance, and this one is positive. So if you press both at the same time, you don't, it basically goes to zero, right? Yeah, they fight each other on the scale. So 
You can't distinguish the difference between these, apparently, is what I've heard. So, there, there could be potential problems with this because that was the issue with the direct input Xbox 360 controller I had. But yeah, I don't know if that's the same for this one or the, the PS5 controller or the PS4 controller. Um, and then obviously raw hid just means we have to do it per controller um, and it can take all day. But we didn't, we didn't do this um, route initially because on OS Linux, it's really good support on OS Linux. Um, you know, we get support for most things. We don't get support for the sense stuff, but we get the touchpad, we get the gamepad, we get the accelerometer, right? We get a lot of, uh, and the gyro. Um, so that's really cool. But on Windows, it's proven a little bit more difficult. And wait, mm, yeah, we can't get the touchpad. We, we've seen that. So I'm not sure what else it might be missing, but we'll see that in, in a bit. So just to go, just to sort of get something done, I think we're going to opt in for raw input because it's like the latest and more low level one. Um, and I want to try it out and see if the, see that problem for myself, basically. Uh, but in future, we could do... Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. And also the other thing is we've, al we've already got a raw input system up and running for the keyboard and mouse anyway. So it's just the easiest thing to do. Um, and, you know, might have one issue with the triggers, which is not really a big issue while we're prototyping, maybe. We'll see. Um, and then X input is something we could do later, but it's only got, it's got a limitation to four controllers, which could be fine for our game. Um, but yeah, if we want to like fully support a controller properly, we probably want to do one of these. And then it is kind of cross-platform. Um, yeah. So we're going to do raw input gamepad support today. So we're taking a look at some sample code and seeing how that works. Wait, let's keep that around just for a sec while we talk. So it's actually true. Uh, that's actually true, but can be changed in the driver. Both triggers form a single axis. Really? Hey there, Nico. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Last day of Windows, Nico, and we're gonna get out of this this hellhole. Back to a Unix system. Where I know this. Um but yeah, so we'll take a look at Mr. No Ideas code, right? Um because he's sent me over some sample code which I've been using while we've been on Windows, which has been super helpful. Um, and what else? Um, but yeah, and then I, I have also seen another GitHub repo online and if it differs from what I'm remembering, then I'm going to take a look at that as well, because there could be two ways of doing it, but we'll see. Rightio. So when a gamepad has been added, it gets these things called caps. Um, I'm not sure what these are. We'll have a look. Get button caps. Right. So I guess it's just saying capacities, right? How many of these buttons or values is it going to have, right? Uh, remember in our OS abstraction. We've got like a single enum for like all the gamepad things, including the sticks and triggers are all in here as well. So when we say, or when we ask for a value of an action, um, it will give us zero to one, right? Um, it, it, as a floating point. So even, so buttons obviously give you zero or one, but then an analog will give you zero to one anywhere in between there do both x input and raw yeah i don't know if it's a good idea though hey, hey there crimson um i don't know what it's like to do both like i i guess we could just 
Like in the future, it might be good to have the option to switch between them. Like I think SDL, um, basically they check your they check the they check the vendor ID and product ID or something like that, and then then they select the correct driver that the preferable driver. So they'll go, oh, um, you know, if you've got a 360 controller, we're going to use the hid interface because we've got one written out for that. Um, and then they fall back to certain other drivers. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, because um, not all controllers will have like a raw input driver, will they? Um, but yeah, it will be good in the future to do that properly. But for now, I only need to support the controllers I've got on my desk. Um, PS4, PS5, and Xbox. And then we'll do, I guess when it comes to actually getting this thing out the door, it will be good to do some proper thing there and have different drivers implementations. Enough for suffering Win32 API, exactly. There's been some kind of horrible moments, but there has been some smooth moments too. It's really bad though. And gotta make sure you disable the audio and come in from the PS4 and PS5. Oh yeah, because when you plug it in, it start, it's like, I'm gonna take over your computer. Right, so there's this pre-parsed data thing. So this one just gets the size, because it passes in null there, right? Then this, and then we, um, this is sample code we're looking at. Um, and then it gets, so this is when we're hooking it in the device, remember? And uh, it gets this pre-parsed data thing, and then this can get parsed into this hid E API to obviously get some extra things. So I guess this thing gives you a list of oh, capabilities, not capacities, of the HID device. Right, so you check its capabilities and we jot all that down, button capabilities, value capabilities. Um, and then, right. And then, then you get the min-max range of things, which we've done in the Linux drive, um, Sorry, the Linux um, abstraction as well with things. Right, I think that, hmm. yeah, it's okay. Cool. Pretty simple. So I guess let's start with that. Because this is kind of, this is kind of um, agnostic in a way. You would uh, probably do this regardless of the or nice raw input maybe. Hey, hey, Sockham. How's the game van engine going? It's going good, it's going good. Uh, we, last stream on the Windows side of things. Gonna be wrapping this up today. Uh, let's get the gamepad in. Then we're gonna be, be moving on to some UI very soon. Um, so next stream, we're gonna be doing a UI renderer using compute only. And it's gonna be pretty sweet. Like I was thinking we could do a UI lib uh, sorry, the uh, subsystem, do, do that first. But I think this GPU library has been sitting here, GPU subsystem has been sitting here ready to be used. And it's like, let's just get using it, you know? So let's do some 2D rendering, get some UI on that screen and uh, do something cool with shaders, right? Compute shaders. Hey there, no idea, how you doing? How's it going, sir? Welcome, welcome. I was playing a game, but I can, hear any audio because it was directed through the controller once. Oh yeah, joys. Yeah, so compute compute shader for rendering. Like we're not we don't have a traditional render pipeline. Because it's too bloat. No, we're just trying out some in we're like, can we make a game compute only? even a 3D game as well. Basically. That's the plan. Right, so let, let's basically steal some of this code. Dun, 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 dun. So we want to get the button cap, value caps, let's take these. They like giving you some bloody big structures, don't they? Look at these. 
They're like, oh yeah, can I can I get these capacities? And you're like, yeah, si maximum sixteen of them, and they're huge, and they're like, uh. Whereas on the Linux side of things, you use the IOCTL thing, and then that does a system call, and you probably do it a few times. Right, this is pretty good code. We can just take a lot of this. Thank you, no idea, appreciate it. Um, and we'll just give it a bit of a, you know, f refactor and fit it into our code base, because obviously allocates memory and stuff like this. So when we add our input device, um, so part of the event loop, oh shoot. Where's my keyboard gone? Hmm. My keyboard has decided to be like, I have no power. Son of a... All right, it's got power again. Okay. Um, right, so it's somewhere down here. There you go. Device changed. So if it, anyone on arrival and type hid gamepad. Right, so this is where we've got to put these. Oh, my keyboard's in that thing now. You know what? Let's change keyboards. Goodbye, Mac keyboard. Serve me well. Time to retire this thing. Fill out the proper keyboard. Uh, going for something like MGUI. Yeah, we're not going to be using DRI MGUI, but we're going to be doing like an immediate mode UI. Yep, that's right. Right. Plug this mouse into my keyboard. Is compute going through your seed to be a compiler Vulkan? Yes. Yep, that's correct. Good test for that as well. Oh, I saw your pair looks really sweet. Thank you. Yeah, we're just trying to keep it very simple right now. Plan. We don't really have any... Like the sync code is just very, very simple. Don't want to do too much. These structures get huge because they've written because they're written in all, all caps. Very much all caps API. You shouldn't hard code those max ray sizes as I have. Okay, I'll take a look into that. Best case screen. Best screen scale ever joke. Uh, when does this one? ICTO, it's called device IO control. Uh, right, got my mechanical keyboard out, so it's, you know, stuff's going real. I don't know if you can hear those keys. Okay, so, ooh, let's nickel that. Right, it's been chaved. And I can get this silly editor. Radio. So the idea is we want to use this. Did I use this one before or is it the A version? That's good. So our device is this handle. And we're using a different enum to say we want this pre parsed data. Um, we pass in old say we don't know, uh, we don't want it to be filled in yet. We just want the size. Then we get the size. Oh, I didn't do the tabs in enough. Right. Then, yeah, then it's just if it's equal to zero, right? So if res equals z not equal to zero, let's just go to gamepad cleanup. Um, 
That's interesting. Right, so we're using a temporary allocator, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but I guess probably still return zero here. Sure, let's drop all that out. Now, now we've got the size. What we're gonna do is we're gonna um all our custom allocator stuff says so core alloc probably just core alloc i didn't like this p1 so i'm going to take out the p and do the pointer manually right um i'm going to allocate this oh this structure ah, it's too many too many key modifiers that there we go um that structure the size and then the alignment. Oh wait. Yes. What did we do before? Because we've done that before with the other one. I want to double check that. Oh wait, wait, sorry. Wait a minute. I think I've written that one wrong that I've just looked at. Just realized. No, that's not the one. It's the one with the input. Yeah. So the frame allocator goes in there. How much I know my own code. Oh, we've got the frame allocator here. Oh yeah, all good. Right, so here goes frame allocator. That's the allocator we want. Very nice. That's just temporary allocator, you know? Oh, I just rolled my own, yeah. Everything in here is hand rolled. Like, anything that's not hand rolled is the, I used a nice little quick library to do the stack trace stuff. So whenever, the, whenever it's seg faults, whenever we abort, Whenever, whenever the, the game shuts down in a way that we don't, um, that it crashes basically in any way, we have a dependency called B stack trace. I use that and obviously STB image, right? And obviously my custom C compiler HCC. So the only dependencies, everything else is hand rolled within the project. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've basically just gone simple and done like a linear allocator for now. And we're only doing those um, until we need anything more complicated. Because they're the fastest allocator, the simplest allocator. Um, so just use them until you, don't, until you need something more complicated. The idea. Um, right, so we call the function again, with a, this time with the thing we've allocated. And voila. This time it can return an, a minus one. Wait, why did it do not equal? That's not right. Oh yeah, not equal. Yeah, it is gonna be zero. Yeah, really it should be if it's equal to negative one. That's what we've done before in the past, I think. Did I? All that. Copy and paste over the wrong thing. Silly me. Righty, eh? Righty, eh? Sweet. So after that, we get the capabilities of the actual device. Um. Do, 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 do. 
Feels weird typing on this mechanical keyboard again. It's been, it's been a while. Been on that Mac keyboard for a bit. Good little break. Yeah, hero lock. Hero lock. What I plan on using eventually, but just whatever fits the problem. Like, I might need a special allocator for a particular problem as well. I create bugs. No. Well, so should this, well, this one up here. Can this return a non-zero value? Because I thought the doc said something else. Yeah, because you said like, because let's read these docs, because I remember reading that it only returns minus one or zero. One success to return, oh, a non-negative number. Yeah, indicating the number of bytes copied to P, but P, yeah, so if P is null, returns a value of zero. So because it's null, if it, if, 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 return, okay. If P data is null, if value of zero is turned in both of these cases, it says the minimum required for the buffer, right? Yeah, so that's the reason why I did it as minus one. But I guess, that accounts for the no equals zero accounts for like any other bugs, right? It's probably better to do no equals zero though, isn't it? Um In success returns a non-negative number indicating the number of bytes copied. Yeah. I don't know because I've used this before and it worked fine. Yeah, it copies zero bytes. Wait, was that right? We've done it for That. Yeah, I've done it for this one here. Minus one is failure. Yeah, so copy zero bytes. So I'm in the wrong one. So it says it doesn't return minus one. If P data is not large enough for the data, the function returns minus one, but you've, so you've passed in null. Yeah, I think that minus one is fine. 
if p data is null, the function returns a value of zero. I still don't get it. If p data is not large enough for the data, if it's null, the function returns a value of zero. Yeah. In both cases, meaning these, both of these. Yes, yeah, so you expect it to return zero. All oh, right, so what you're saying is if it's not equal to zero. Yeah, but still, it, it seems like it never fails then, right? Yeah, I'm still confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm still confused though. Well, I don't, I don't know. It, the re, the reading of it is weird. It says it, if successful, it returns a non-negative number of bytes copied to p data. But obviously, it's not copying anything, so it would be zero, right? And then it's saying here, if there if there is large, not large enough, it returns minus, you know, minus one. And then it's saying if is null, you know. So it's kind of like. Yeah, it's kind of, I see how it's like just, it, it's more of a catch-all though. Um, yeah, it's just more of a catch-all as all. Um, which means I've got to correct the other ones then. And also because the other ones are, they do that casted event. There you go. So the problem is then for these ones. I uh, fine. What? Are oh, these ones different? <laughs> uh, the other ones are fine. The inconsistencies are going crazy. Right, if p data is null and the function is successful, the return value is zero. If p data is not null and the function is successful, the value is, is the number of bytes copied. For an error, it'd be minus one. Hmm. That is right, isn't it? Well, it's, kind of, it's still kind of the same thing. I think they're both the same, but I'll, I'll keep it as not equal zero. I think it, the thing is, Kind of the same. But yeah, this one we find here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's passing off the other one as well. But yeah, yeah, this just catches any bugs in the bugs as well, I guess, um, in their code. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. If it's not zero. That means you have an error. Right. Cool. So I don't find any other errors. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, because it's starting up here if successful. But then it's, it this seems like an error clause. It's so weirdly worded. It's so weirdly worded. Yeah, then you want the size to be non-zero, that's right. Yeah. Uh, honestly, reading documentation for Microsoft and Vulkan is like the most uh, painful thing ever. Right, so you get these capabilities for the device. So... Oh, will it? It will return you out of your function. Oh, shoot. Right, that's correct. Thank you. Appreciate it. First call with null, get CV size. It should be. Then I like a buffer of that. Yeah, that's the pattern. Yeah. Yeah, same sort of pattern. All right. Hey, hey there, Akras. Welcome back, Hayden. All right, so you get these device capabilities. Um, so this here. We could just allocate this dynamically, right? Basically. Um, that's the idea. So it's in an array, yes? Yeah? So we've got a nice little handy dandy macro. How many array elements? Uh, these guys. Cool. Um, right, so it's equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero. Four of its. So we just want to, hmm. Just saying it doesn't have any like buttons or anything. Or is something like this? Evening, Bobos. How you been? Right. So, what's the sort of plan from here? Oh, my days. That needs to stay around. Um. Okay. So we hop into this array and get the capabilities. Very nice. Uh, what else are we doing? Probably just join that all up one line. My days is warm. Where is this music gone? We're gonna focus on personal life. See you around. See you around. Have so come good to see you. See you in a future stream sometime. Um, right, so we do the same sort of thing again, but for the value K 
capabilities. So I guess these are like the triggers, basically. Something like that. Um. Um. So the idea. is that we also want to do that check again. So number of values equals zero, do that. Um, some success message here. Uh, same again, do another success check. Doing that all up in one line. Um, uh, what else? Right, so this part pre parse data stays around for some reason. Let's check the sample code again. pre parse data. Um, because you need it for when you read gamepad input. Okay, so we'll keep that around. This pre parsed data pointer needs to stick around. So in our input device, so the Windows internal, uh, we're going to find the input device and chuck in another pointer and this one is going to be for uh, pre parsed data cool so we just want to make sure that we set that at the end so basically all the way down here we get we Say hey, we've connected this gamepad, and we get the backend data for it. So that allows us say input device backend pause data equals pause data. So keep that around. That's good. All right, let's keep reading these capabilities because there's some more stuff I've got to get out of here. Um, there's also a capacity as well. Um, wait a minute, is this temporary allocated? <laughs> so we have to make sure hmm. do we do that in the linux side of things at all right hmm. yeah we probably want to do like a custom allocator in some way but um yeah, we cannot use the frame allocator here. We've got to use the more uh, persistent one. Let's fish that out. Yeah, frame allocator, freeze, freeze it. It's a little bugger. It'll be overwritten in no time. It's not good, is it? Um, so I forgot what the other one I got now. I got one of them. Uh, which ones have I got? I got like two. Oh, static allocator. That's it. So this one never freeze. So if you keep plug unplugging and plugging new ones in, it will just build up. But that is fine for now. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll keep note. To do. Um. So we probably want to have our own allocator. Where. I don't know. We'll figure it out. To do, um, use an allocator that can actually free and reuse memory. So for now, that ought to be good enough. Um, righty -o. So we will need to keep around the capacity as well. That is a good, good, uh, good help there. 
So let's see on his U and footers. Um, pre parsed data size. And that will go to the bottom as well. There we go. It's looking good. Looking good. So, right. So here, you get, get um, from the sample code, right, it's either a button axis or a hat switch, whatever hat switch is. Hmm, interesting. Um, I'm sure we'll see that here, but obviously we don't need any of this because our enum is just a single enum. Um, then it goes over all of the, Uh, these are button index. So we went from zero to button caps count. And right, so this is not a button. So I guess it should always be a button, but again, it could be a bug, I guess, right? So probably good to check that. But maybe it could be something different. Uh, I use a pool allocator for the devices. So it's just a big, big old pool. Oh no. I see, I see, thank you. Yeah, so um, so basically we have a pool, a core pool, you know, maybe not, object pool, that's what we have. So we have an object pool where it's basically like, it's typed. So we have one for our input devices um, and it's just a, a single array and we can sub allocate from that array, uh, but it's fixed size, it never reallocates. So we just allocate 256 of these input devices and we just allocate an individual one. So they are quite big, um, the input device. Yeah, it's just poor allocated. <laughs> Yeah, there was one without even knowing there was a, as it was a bug, um, hardware acceleration, touch switch. Ooh, Ooh, fair play. Never knew it was called that. Right. So is range. You remember the PS2 controllers used to have pressure sensitive face buttons. Those were the days. Now they're just digital. Yeah, they're, they're, they're binary, right? On and off. Um, is range. So there's an is range flag. If not, it's not range. Isn't that amazing? Right. Um, Right, usage button one. Okay, so what are, what are we doing here? Right, so that maps to a, oh boy. Right, 32, but up to 32 buttons. Um, right, so you're just simply in the data array. There's a data index. Okay.
Yeah, just got to see all this data indexes. Ah, shoot. What is this little bugger? Is this the one that you get back when you read the data? Right, yeah, so we might need to keep those around then. Let's take, let's take a gander at some more of the code. Right, so when you read the event data in, you're going to be like, go over all the data, and if it's an axis or a button. Right. I see now. I see, right. So, okay, good to know. So the button caps are here. So what I'm thinking about doing, yeah, different mapping. What I did is iterate over the button caps, look at the usage, then map it to a cust my custom features. Yeah. I see. So I think we had this in the Linux. No, we didn't. In the Linux, says it's just an enum, which I guess it, this is as well. Um, but the problem is is this is not a lookup table. Right, I see. So the problem is, is you're gonna be getting an array of data in or something. Oh my days, go back to here. The problem is, is you're given an array of buttons and array of values, but when you read the input data, you're given an array of data and you need to be able to map that data index to whatever it is, right? Got it. Uh, so, all right, let's just have a look at, right, so reading the input data. Yeah, let's see. So rather than iterating over all the things, you can just sort of do a lookup. So we might do a lookup then to, Yeah, we'll probably just have a quick and dirty thing, basically. Yeah, we'll do something like this, I think. Um, I don't realize there is this. Yeah, so there is some other sample code that I saw. Let me just quickly look at that. So like gamepad. There's some sample code I saw. Um, maybe. Um, Now won it. This is it. I want to see what they do. Um, so they read the raw input. Then they get the caps. Are they really going over all the...
Where's the data? Data parse data. Then they're using this sort of get usage value. So it, does this internal function do some iterating maybe? Oh, how it switches the D-pad. I found a bug with the directional mapping. Right. Okay, good to know. Oh, that's weird. Google did a different thing for that. But yeah. So I think this, you're avoiding using this perhaps. Um, so you're storing the data yourself and you... I guess this does a lookup. Wait, I'm using the wrong one. No, I'm in the right one. Yeah, I guess you're doing a lookup. So input. Wait, this is different. Wait, this is not right. Oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. This is not the input data. Let's have a look. Uh, no, it's right. This. Hit P, get data. Right. So they're not using that then. So this just gets the capacities and prints out. Input rule. The mobile functions to get the input there. Fair play. Yeah. This probably gets it all in bulk. Yeah. And this one allows you to go over all of them and get their current value or something like that. Yeah, it does, it does seem that way. Yeah, this one seems like you're checking every individual button and value. Yeah, that's fair play. Yeah, I think your approach is better. I do like it. It just means I've got to write that quick, that quick sort of like remapping thing, which is not a big deal. So we just want to have a couple of things in here. So we just want to say like, well, we need, we need to have like an enum. OS Windows. Um, Action type. I don't know what to call it. A bit too long. Which which name in did you did you use? Um what are features in it? Mm. I don't know. It's gonna get long. Right, so either you've got like a button or you're gonna access. Uh, so I think let's just, let's do those for now and we'll just get something up and running quick. And if we come across the code need to add another one, we'll do it. So then you have like an, like you basically wanna have like action info or one. Something. Um. So you basically want to have this sort of like type. Uh, press the build button. 
There we go. And you do that union. And there's different capabilities, right? Uh, bear in mind, I have temporary allocated those as well, I think. And we want to keep those around if we're going to reference those. Because from what I remember, with no, with no ideas code. Wait, what does he do? Oh, no, it's your own little one. That's fair. So we just need, right. Can you map it to your enum? Fair. Um, so for us, wait, what are we doing? Wait, we don't need a type. Ours is just a flat enum. Uh, but there is a min max value, right? For axes. Because we've done that for. Yeah, so on the, li on the, li the Linux side of things, we did have to do that. And we did button action ranges. And we had this min max range. Right, and then we had this bindings thing. Bindings to a data index. Yeah, yeah, that's all we need to do. Right. Got it. We've got a simple solution. So we get rid of all this we just typed. Deleting code is great. So then we want to have like um something like this. Uh, so we just want to do a U32. So bindings. And then you want to have like uh, a ranges thing. Uh, access range. Oh, is it an access range? Um, gamepad action range something like that that'd be super ideal so this is what we're going to be filling in when we connect the input devices proper decent um yeah Installing Windows is almost faster in a VM than on hardware on your laptop, really? They must know they're running in a VM, maybe. That's weird. Um, yeah, I guess it's installing less drivers, maybe. So we just got to fill in those arrays. But I think in the Linux side of things, we can, did we connect it before? Or we might have copied the arrays. Should we look at the... Li the Linux code. Um, copy array. Right. Mm. Wait from default bindings. Go over all the actions. Yeah. Right. So move the arrays after we've connected the device. Okay. Okay. We're doing good. We're doing good. Hey there, Ty Beaver. How's it going? How rusty are you feeling? Just got back from uh, Cali VK. Nice. How'd it go? Um, I just need to quickly pop away and get a, get a drink, but I'll be back. I'll be back. Enjoy the tunes.
All right, welcome back, everyone. How we doing? Oh, amazing! Look at these special effects. Okay. Yeah, I would love to listen to that music with you guys, but it is baking warm. I had my headphones on earlier and it was destroying my thought process. Hey there, Eternal Divine Fox, how we doing? I went and fetched one of the best chocolate bars from, from downstairs. Got myself a bounty, you know? Oh, beautiful. So, Now we've figured out what we need to do. We want to take this and put it underneath here. Right? So the simple idea is it's going to tell us the mapping. So we do this input device connected. Doing well, just got back. Sorry. Um, just got. DirectX 11 working with, with the minimal recovery required. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, I think DirectX 11 is like probably the thing to suggest people start on. And you can probably use it for like a good while. Because honestly, these new APIs are just such a pain in the butt. Jeez, it's too much. Yeah, I think like the way I can describe Vulkan and DirectX 12 is there an API that you can use to implement DirectX 11 in? Right. And that's the way to describe it. So if you familiarize yourself with DirectX 11, then you'll be like, and you know what to build with that, then you'll be, then you'll sort of find parts of the API where you're like, oh, this could be improved. Right. We made better. Oh, yeah. I yeah, they're just complete rocket science. I, I went from OpenGL to to Vulkan, and it was it was so painful. But yeah, I'm doing good. And hey there, Travis. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Um, yeah, I'm doing good. Just been looking after the baby, went to the butchers, got tons of meat for a barbecue I'm having at the weekend. So there's no Sunday stream, but um, yeah. Things are doing good, doing amazing. Last window stream. Oh yeah, yeah, those VK structure types, they're not so bad because you can typically, or you can actually just work out what they are just by knowing the structure name. But yeah, they are annoying, and then you set your p-next field, and maybe the flags field. The worst one is the structures that don't have that p-next field or that s-type at the top, and then later on they add an, a new structure with two on the end, just so they could do that. And you're like, ah, uh. yeah. Um. Wait a minute. How do we map it? That's a good question. So in no ideas code. Hmm. Take a look at the sample code. Right. Usage dash, okay. I 
I've heard about the game engine API called Anna Anna Re. Um. Oh, good old C ninety nine API. Look at those C plus plus wrappers. Take a look at Vulcan.cpp, guys. Have some fun. They're an only long some time. Also P next, yeah. Oh, the P next chains. Yeah. When you set set up that the device, the Vulcan device, there's some really weird stuff you have to do because. You don't know if the device is 1.0 yet, so you can't quite feed it all the PNEX structures sometimes, and you're like, oh my days. But I got a few dots on a triangle rendered. Nice, not much, but something. Still far away from loading 3D models. That's cool. That's, it's still a good achievement. Triangles is a good achievement. They should have an official wrap of do Along with Vulcan, so many wasted hours implementing the same render hardware abstraction. Well, not really. Oh my day, soul foam. Thank you, appreciate it, my friend. Thank you for those um, that prime money. Appreciate it. Welcome to the club. See, the worst thing about Kronos, and I've said this a few times, right? But Kronos on their blog are like, and I'll read that in just a sec. But they're always like, here's the most amazing new extension. And then like, no one supports it. And it's, they're, right, we can go to this one. Da -na 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 -na, descriptor buffer. There's one. They like talk about how amazing this extension is and if it's great. No one's supporting it still. Um, You know, nearly a year now. Is it, or it's, it's nine months, right? Um, then after that, there's the pipeline one. And they're like, here's a new, yeah, shader object. Wait, yeah. We can, and you know, here today, we can completely remove pipelines. Then it's just basically a pipeline caching system. If, if, you, so if, if the extension is not supported officially, there's a fallback. And that's basically a pipeline caching system which everyone writes anyway and it's it's literally like the most simplest piece of code you can ever write and it doesn't really fix much you know so there's there's all these things that just they just make the api more complicated and it's just it's just crazy yeah chronos all they need to do is give us tiling memory in compute shaders and that would be amazing but instead of just doing silly stuff like that. Like, just allow it so we can use tiling memory, please, and compute. Yeah, it will revolutionize the industry in 20 years, yeah. Working around, or working around Molten VK support has been fun too. Yeah, I've not really used Molten VK but I've, you know, they're stuck on 1.2 right now and they have bindless, right? But yeah, I've not tested any of it. Oh, dynamic state, yeah. Yeah, the most crazy stuff to support in Vulcan though is when you have like those very, very sort of like niche. I say niche because I mean, those very sort of like far away sort of like supported feature so like for instance maybe like uh this format what's the maximum number of mip levels for this format or what's the number maximum number of whatever's supported for this format and this it's a very sort of like you've got to really program that in your back end to capture those errors like it's it's really crazy like you or like this um uh, this texture cannot be created in a linear format, for instance, right? So basically, you should kind of avoid linear formats. They're quite, quite restrictive. But yeah, right. What is this thing? Um, oh. Um, as the industry's first cross-platform 3D rendering engine 
Open standard API. Right, so it's a rendering en engine. Right. Fair play. C99, though, that's good. Right, so there's like a scene representation. So is it different implementations then? Or just the one I imagine? Implementations, oh my days. Right, so the rendering engines can support the yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know how good, good this is because surely you have to translate. So maybe it's just an API that then translates into their APIs, maybe. Okay. Fair play. Yeah, fair, fair enough. A little bit of a JavaScript supports WebGL, which runs over. Yeah. It's glitchy because it's dark. Yeah. And the green screen. Problem fixed. So I didn't realize. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at this thing. I already got it here. Indicates the inclusive upper, no, lower bound of the usage range whose inclusive upper bound. Hmm. Right. So I guess the mapping could be different. So I guess there's a default mapping. I got it. Got it, got it, got it. So on the Linuxes, we've done a very similar thing. We have this sort of like, Where is that right? Hmm. Linux I Linux is oh, let's probably just say, just say the Linux is, you know. Uh Eternal Divine Fox. I won't really bother learning OpenGL if you've learnt DirectX eleven. Unless you want to sort of just see why people think or have certain opinions about it. Is all. Um
Okay, so device can report back so many buttons and and so many axes as well. That's the idea. Oh, I pressed the F11 button. No. Um. Right. Okay. Okay. Right, so that one's clearly different. So I, I guess what we want to do is have like a default array like we have on the Linux one. Uh. Right, so we have the button bindings, which map a usage to an action. And then you also want to be able to take in a data index. and then get um, an action out as well. Right, gamepad. Do you wanna have like button, button bindings? Uh, so this would be some default array. Yeah, it's a button usage to action map. So there'll be a default map for that. So that's a, it's a bit like the EV dev enum, basically. Um, so we probably won't need this thing to exist in the structure. We might only need it to exist inside the setup code when we attach the device. Then we have a data index to action map. This is when we read the events back gives us a data index and we can read that in. Um, or we can map it to our action basically. And then we also want to be able to map, right, so this can probably have like, uh, right, let's just do like 64 or something like that. I don't know. I think, yeah, anyway, we'll move that in a second. So then we, also, do we want an action to a data index? I don't think we ever want that. Um, that bindings is this array here and the action ranges, that will be in there as well. Okay, good, good, good. So let's take that with us. We go into the Windows code when we set this thing up. So the idea is like the, So in the in the Linux code, we've got the um, this sort of like default bindings default bindings map. We want a similar thing in the Windows code, where we want to be able to say like, "Hey, here is Windows Gamepad button usage default bindings." Um, so that would just be like, uh, I don't know, we'll just do like that. So I'll map to a gamepad action. And at the bottom of this crazy, lovely lookup table.
so if we go back to the sample code, there is a super lovely enum here. So we'll just default to using something like this. Um, so we obviously have our own. I wonder where that access is used. We'll check in a second. So what we're going to be doing is change this to our enum. Oh, shoot. OS gamepad action. So I think I've got like face, right? So A is face down. B is face right. And X is face left. And face up. So Um, left menu, left, hmm. so I think I call this like shoulder left, shoulder left, shoulder right. Uh, and then we want to have like a, f so this would be the left stick and stick right. That's when you push them in, right? R3, L3, that sort of thing. Um, so L menu and L select. Um, I guess this is start and this is select, right? So a kind of funny thing on the PlayStation controller is they completely renamed start to options because it makes the most sense calling it that, right? Um, but it still sounds weird to say options as someone who's called it start for so long. Um, right, so this is the default mapping at least. Um, cool. So what we want to want to do then is we'll have this mapping um like here basically what's the share button linked to um I don't know what the share is actually that's a good point. It will be different on each system though. Um, we'll have a look. Uh, right, so we want to get our little map here. So we've done it on the Linux side of things as well with the button map. To do have a user configurable game action. Huh. Because we go over all the game actions rather than the data arrays. Hmm. Let's double check that input code one more time. Maybe the, the lookup table is the wrong way around, which is fine. So when it's read in as data index. Uh, Where is it?
Here we go. So it goes over every data. So you read in a full data, it gets the data count. Right. So you might as well just read in the full amount of data anyway. And then run out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do it. We'll do that. We'll do that. Just change this around. No biggie. Um, so what we want to get is the data index from here. I may I ask you how you build large C projects? Do you use CMake? Nah. Um, I don't know. Like every other person likes to use it, but I don't like it. Like quite a lot of people like CMake and all this stuff. Not, not really my thing. Basically. Um. What do I prefer? Um, so I prefer, I prefer to, when you start off your project, I prefer just to build, build scripts, a simple build scripts, one for each platform, which simply invokes the compiler on a single C file. And that C file will simply include every other C file. So it's known as a single compilation unit. If you search that up, you'll find it. So we just include every other C file in the main file and it just builds it all together now on the when you can't do that because the project does get too big which happens uh, my solution is have a custom build system um, because existing build systems are too complicated um, you can make something far simpler and if we need it we're going to build it um, it's not it's not difficult you can use clang to get you the, the dependencies of every file when you build it you can cache uh, timestamps to tell when things have changed and then you can sort of like know what things to build when 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 uh, the the timestamps are different and a new file has been saved um but yeah do you ever use precompile headers not really they're just Here's the thing, you should not rely on data indices stability. It can change with the driver update, for example. Who will know? What I want to map is usage page. Yeah, so I'm doing the usage thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mapping to the button usage. Yeah, this is for button usages. Yes. So because it's yeah. And yeah, and then we're gonna retrieve the data indices with this lookup table. Also, where did this enum come from of yours? This um how did you how did you find the button usages? Uh where is it? I can't find it anymore, I closed the file. But yeah, you've basically got your own enum for the your your gamepad buttons. Where did that one come from in that order? Because you basically just do a difference between the usages and cast it. Yeah, the named buttons, the enum for it. It was that a reverse engineer, did you just test it out and see what they were? Or is that in, in some place somewhere? Um Oh, this is going to be a bit silly. Oh, why did I copy all that in there? Um, there was the Xbox, Xbox uh, gamepad layout. Right. Yeah, so I, I'll have to do it on different ones then, fair play. That, that's fair play. We can we can jot them down. We'll have a default one though. But it's so bad they're all different. So So 
something like that. The game had button usage default bindings. Wait. Sweet. So this is going to be a U32 star. Um, This gives you a good reason to start a flame war about all the game right gamepad button lay gamepad layouts. Yeah, I don't know, it's very not tied to anything. They start from one not zero. Oh shoot. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, it's just all non-standard and it's really like it's just insane like it makes it so like it's more desirable to have middleware which is really bad like a really bad thing not a fan all right so finally we got our crap together um so the idea is you look you just look up with that with the um the action so um um wait which way around again was it yes yeah, so i think we just did a for loop and found the first one in the Linux side of things when we booted it up. Uh, yeah, I think we just do a for loop when we process. Nah, it doesn't matter. Hey there, Prinik. Welcome, 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 welcome. So basically, we need a way. We kind of want a way to like. So this gives us a use, has a usage in it. We kind of want the mapping to be the other way around, actually. Is that right? Yeah, you know, it was right the other way around, damn it. Right, let's undo it. You're saying it starts from one? Um. OS uh, Gamepad button usage default bindings, right? So it's kind of the other way around on Windows, which I guess is not too much of a problem. To button usage. Um, right, so we kind of want to also have a, a number of these as well, like how many are, are here so we don't overflow it, and um, we can just discard it or something. And the whole idea is we want to build the other array. 
Uh, so here we'll just do that lovely core array count, like so. Um, so in here we want to build. So we want to build this array, right? A data index to the action map, right? So it maps to our gamepad action. So we're going over. So basically, the idea is. Right, so have this usage from one. Starts from one, fair play. So the idea is we want to go. So if it is a range, range min and max. So if it's specifying a range of buttons. This is so dodgy. Why didn't they just do many different entries? There. Right. Right, I've got to do a plus equals one here. Uh, rest is good. So the idea is we want to get the, you want to map it into an action basically. So you say action equal gamepad button usage bindings. And you're going to then use that. So you want to find like, Um, right, yes, yeah, so we can just throw the usage straight in there, basically, um, and get your action. Now we want to go into the input device back end, we want to find that new data index map. And the idea is we've got this data index and we're simply just going to assign it the action. So now when we, wait, which way around do we want it again? So, um, we might want it the other way around because it might be better to iterate over all the actions. And is that right? Which way do we do it on the Linux side of things? So on the Linux side of things, we go over all of the actions. Do something like that, yeah. All right, sounds like a good idea. So I think we we'll want an action to a data index map instead the other way around. How am I doing? Not doing bad, not doing bad. Just, uh, Trying to wrap up on this input device stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, do I'm doing okay. How you doing? Right, so we should simply be able to use this. Wait a minute. It's the other way around now. Oh, wait. That is right. I just named it wrong, the wrong way around. Right, so action and then data index. So here we go. Uh, then you also want to do this sort of like, if it's not a range, you just want to grab the usage and then just basically do these two things. Like so. Voila. Right, so that's for the buttons. Um, bearing in mind, we also want to set the action range. So what's the min and max value? Um, we need to look at the way the data is read actually. How similar is it? Um, so when you read it in, 
the data info at least is the same structure. Sorry. The values or on for buttons. Right, so. Is a Boolean or a long? So it's either one or zero. Uh, so the problem is it's as a union, which is really kind of annoying. Um, it would just be better as just a long, but may maybe that's fine. Maybe we can read just the raw value and it could be fine. It depends on the order where it entirely depends, right? So yeah, basically it's one or zero. Uh, we'll we'll set it up and just see how it goes. Ranges action dot min max one. Same thing here, and voila. So hopefully we just get to reuse that and make the code very general, but I don't know if it'll work. We'll see. So final thing here in the setup code is for the values. Uh, bear in mind I've just gone and made that wrong. So it's value index um, and then value caps count. So, um, Radio, so it's not equal to the generic usage page. We are going to continue. Um, what's going on here? So bit count. Interesting. Um. So it's the same sort of thing here. Too much to change really is pretty good. So if it's a range of them. That's what that is. Right. But this time it's from like a value, like an analog stick or something. So it turns out there's different usage pages. Sorry, uh, hitch usage. Um, usages, right, or usage, um, X, so these could all be different, so we need a mapping, okay, so, right, but they should, they should be the same, um, although we could do a big table for that. If it's under generic. Okay. So I wonder. Hmm. There's also a gamepad, generic gamepad page, but I don't know if it's ever used. We'll see. Um, right, so for now it's just this generic thing. I guess we'll plug it all in, in the different, uh, different devices and see what, what it is. Um, if this changes at all. 
But yeah, so effectively we want to map this to something sensible as well. So again, we'll have another sort of table like this. Um, we want to say sort of generic usage default bindings or something like that. Um, so for this one, we're going to be using basically this thing here. We'll just take all of it, grab the enum values, do the lookup table for it. Um, Radio, very good. Do we have a nun? I think we have a nun. Maybe we should have a nun there. Uh, probably would be a good idea. I don't know if it'll break anything there. Because, you know, so, otherwise some things might default to D-pad left or something. D-pad has to be reported as an analog value. How strange. Oh, you can't just do a lookup table. Um, build a station, build bat files. Yeah, I'm just doing the simplest thing, basically. Uh, we're just doing a single compilation unit right now. Um, if we need to do anything more complicated, we'll do it. But we're just doing the simplest thing. Um, right, so we're saying the hat switch. Bit count is four. Um... Right, so you can't just do a lookup table. Oh my days. This report is an analog value. Why? Huh? Right, so this report is an analog value. Right, because, <laughs> because on the Xbox. You've got actual diagonals on it. Damn these things. Oh, I see, I see. Mm. Right, so you set up as a hat switch. Which means, okay. Clever, I see. Right, it's also some way we can get get around this in some way. So, um, right, so it's not as simple as I could. As I initially thought, really. Ugh. But they got like D pad left and D pad right. What is what is going on? How annoying is that? So do some drivers then. You know what? We we gotta we gotta just test some code out. We're just going to run some code. 
Yeah, I might do the thing you did, but I want to I wanna test out some code because this is like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, probably will, uh, yeah, we want to find out if we get, I've got three different controllers here. Let's plug these in and find out. Have bear for dinner. Have a great evening. No worries, Danzi. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you in a future one. And ha have a great, have a great dinner. Uh, so if we test the hot plugging, we can get some asserts in and just figure out what is, what is going on basically. Where is this thing declared? Um, well, we just forward declare it, that's what. I think it only needs to be underscore whatever data. We'll figure it out. This thing has changed massively. Um... Um, so just calculate it. Wait, plus another eight. And to create the map, you need to know usage to feature mapping yep yeah yeah that's what i tried to do but it just doesn't quite do a one-to-one -one map so i need to do a special map yeah um 32 plus twenty five times four um yes yeah, plus hundred obviously in it, and then we've got basically eight times 25 that's another 200 plus a ball which is one round up to the nearest eight so that's three wait a minute Yes, three forty, isn't it? Cool, I get past that. Oh, and a little bit too high, apparently. Huh? Oh, because it's in 300s. It's off. Yeah, so... Uh, what's the nearest? It was a like mod eight, wasn't it? Um, I forgot the number was now. It was a little bit off, but it'd be how close are we?
There we go. Um, right, let's compile that one. Man, I'm so tired, that was so dumb of me. So... That's the way around it, or we could fill in none. We're doing none now. That'll work. What's it going on here? So we we need to get the figure out whether this is actually declared then. Um the head of file this is declared in is This one. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Right, so obviously not a capital letter, it's probably some docu documentation thing. Ugh. Oh, come on. Right, so maybe you cannot use that one. You have to use a pre a P prefix. Okay, so an underscore. Uh, right. Break that. Cool. Give that all build him. Uh... Very nice. Right, so there's no align of, um, so we'll just align to eight. Eight bytes. Um, redefinition of value caps, sure thing, sorted that out, thank you. Uh, no. Right, so we were just going to look at these. Just comment that out. No biggie. Right, so it's compiling now. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. We want to kind of figure out like, like if that hat switch is used on another controller. Um, oh, I just want to see what it has. Um, So I want to see if we hit this here, where it continues. That'd be interesting. We also want to see, hey, if um, 
uh, if we hit so if the usage we get is right usage equal hid usage generic hat switch <laughs> fat switch no. um, so that'll just be core breakpoint I want it to hit breakpoint right take a look at that um, we'll do it down here as well now we also want to check to see if we get one of those d-pad buttons like d-pad down right we're going to plug in like three different controllers and see what we get cool so let's run with that let's see what happens we've got the xbox controller here we've got the 360 controller you can see in windows what your gamepad has oh right i didn't realize well where do you oh wait wait i think i've seen that before yeah we should Right, so we've got a hat switch on that one. Yeah, I remember actually, you should take a look at that. Um, it was like printers and devices, I think it was in. It wasn't in that one. Uh, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Um, right, it's not giving me the other bells and whistles. Right, device and right, so the old school control panel. Um, then we want the device printers. This is going to the new one though. Damn it, Windows. Yeah, there was a there was a way to do the old one. I forgot what um what we did last time because we we did get it up. It was weird though. Um Oh well we'll just go through here and see what happens. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll see it through here to be fair. Ooh. There. Yeah, I forgot how we did it before. We got there. Could have swore it was on the Aha, got it. Obviously I pressed the more button.
Hmm. Is it somewhere in here? There is a capabilities thing. Right click the controller icon. Is there any of this stuff? Ah, the button one, two, three, fours. Point of view hat. Right. But this does, okay. Oh my days, it's on the Z axis? That's what he was talking about. Oh my days. I, I think someone said you can change that. You can configure that in the driver or something. So anyway, let's plug in another controller and see what we get. Plug in the PS5 one. Yeah, I heard you could change it just today by someone. That's really bad design. Why did someone do that? All right, PS5 controller. Um, we're going to get the, uh, right. So what happened? Aha. Hello. Welcome to the PlayStation 5 microphone. Uh... Right, there we go. Much better. No, it didn't sound better. Nah, it didn't. Don't you troll me. Right. See, PlayStation. This is why PlayStation is better than Xbox. Can you see these different axes? Oh my, what? Oh, okay. So it's called X axis and one's rotation, but it's okay, got it. Right, so when you move this around, like there's nothing wrong with, it's not axis and rotation. This is literally like up, down, left, right. That's all it is. Right, so this hat thing. It still uses that hat thing, point of view hat. By the looks of it, we'll, we'll, we'll double check it. Oh, Shylex, my friend, thank you. Appreciate it. I 
I cannot believe it sounded better. That's a damn shame. Wait. What is it then? Huh. I hear the hat switch. Yeah. Fair play, but what is it? 6,000 and whatever. Wait, was it 6,000? I don't remember what it was. Ooh. FF0. What a good game. Vendor Defined Begin. Oh, yeah. So I guess you can get some other things from it. Fair enough. Right. Good to know. Good to know. The hat switch is for all the things. And thank you, Charlex, again for that sub. Appreciate it, sir. Right. We've got to do things now. So. Hat switch is special. Do, do I need to map a hat switch? Um, we should just ignore it. Basically. If it's equal to hat switch, ignore. That's the way we're going to roll. But we'll pick it up in the in the thing anyway. So I think we can keep what we're doing. Basically. So the Xbox controller. Right. I see. Okay, so we might have to do some vendor IDs thing or something. Pull those out. Let's see what's going on there. Uh, so for no ideas code for the, the Xbox controller at least it was was left stick X. Now thinking about it On the Linux side of things, because our mapping is actually a two, you know, we've got stick axis X going to the left and the right, basically. Um, so you can map the analog going up to a different thing. Um, so on the Linux side of things, we actually had this binding instead. Hmm. Where we knew if it, if it needed to be positive or not. Right. What sorts of values do you get back? Um, filter out the invalid bits, scale with the target range. Make it signed. 
center is zero. Okay. Gotcha. So it's a very similar thing where there's a positive and negative value. Um, So the problem with these So I guess these can have two mappings, two actions on them. Is that a good idea? Positive and negative basically. Yeah, I think you want to get like Yeah, that's okay. Call it a pair. Cuz you can't necessarily return an array. Which sucks. So you want to say that positive, negative, something like that. So we'll just fill that in, be pretty easy. Oh, many bugged that up. Right, so for the Xbox at least, there was something like Set up. Cool. So thumb X left. So we call it like stick left. X, yes, and then there's east and west. So positive you think is to the right, right? So that is east. And then we use the west one. And then like that. Uh, the Y I imagine is still left stick. Yep, but on the Y, north, south. Um. Yeah, I have no idea. Why north? I imagine. Why south? Um, R in this case is. Is the right one. I cannot believe the 360 controller is maps like this. Oh my days. Why did they even do that? Terrible drivers. Z. Wait a minute. On PC. Is merged into one. Yeah, but they didn't have an RZ in uh, plug the 360 back in. Just on the PS5 control. Just on those PS5s. There's so many places to get here. Yeah, they just had a, a Z. Okay. So 
So we're definitely going to have a 360 one and then a PS5 one as well. We'll do a look up for that. Um, D pad. Sorry, trigger. Trigger right is positive. I think. Trigger left is negative, something like that. That'd be proper ideal. We can use that. I want to return a pair, by the way. Very nice. Cool. Um, use a configurable button action to sort of generic usage. And they, they are, right? So, we are definitely going to be sorting that out. Uh, let's take the word default out of there, it's not default anymore. Cool. Um, nice. And now we simply just want to map. Do a look up, get a pair. Get a pair back. Oh, we didn't do the bounds check. Top point of the count. No biggie. There you go. Super decent. Um, so we want to achieve a very similar thing here. So we need the ranges. So we'll get that in there as well. Uh, so the idea is we skip the hat switch. Because that will just be set up anyway. Like that's pretty much just hard-coded to a D-pad. Um, then... Instead of button usages, we're doing it for the generic usage. Um, for anyone, this one is. Oh, that's no, fine. That's fine. Um, now we want to pair. We want to get an action pair back. Um, looking in this array here. So the idea is we just got to do this twice. So we say action pair. So the problem is now with the action is it might, it can't just be as simple as a data index. It has to also be, um, Yeah, I don't know why I've got the ranges in a separate one. Why am I doing it in a separate one? Why don't I just have a big... Because you're just going to be going over all the actions, getting the data index, and then getting the other things out as well. I don't think it's good putting it in a separate array at all. So maybe we'll just call it action info, something like that. Um, so here you would have that data index, then you'd have the min and max value, then you'd also have the, um, if it's boolean for is positive, as well. Very nice, so we'll just swap those over there. This would be to info map. Nice, we'll fill that in. 
should be much better. So effectively, we're just going to have this info map, the address, throw in the action, and then we're simply just going to fill this lovely thing in. So info, right, data index, data IDX. Very nice stream. This is pretty hardcore's bonest. I'm definitely going to watch some of your first streams on YouTube, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we're just wrapping up on the, you know what, I'll drop you a, uh, drop you a few links. Um, there's VODs there, uh, and uh, if you go onto my YouTube, is this YT? Yeah, there's there's like a devlog. Um, I haven't really done some recently because I've just been busy. But um, if you watch the first one, it tells you kind of what this project is about a little bit more. Um, and that's the sort of things we want to do. But yeah, we're going to be doing some rendering next. Um, well, I did say next stream, but I don't know how much of this one get finished. To be honest, we we're getting close. There's just a few things that. Ugh. Yeah. Um. But yeah, take a look there. We're just gonna finish up in the OS layer basically we're nearly there nearly right so now we've got this thing even better so when we connect the device we can fill in all of this lovely so um oh man well, there's a min and max here. All right, be good to know. Ah, bit count array. Oh, I see. Right, so that specifies the map. Oh my days. Filter out the invalid bits. So I guess the minimax is always. Right, I see. Hmm. Scale it with the top. Oh my days! Right, so get the raw value. Filter out the invalid bits. You've got. You multiply it by max. Divide by the source. Right, so you're converting it into. The source range. I see. So the range is ooh right. Zero to and you're turning it to a unit sixteen range. Fair play. You do a U sixty four so it doesn't overflow. Gotcha. Don't know how they detect that some axis should not be centered, but I guess you don't. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty clever way of doing it, though. You're getting a value back. Yeah. Oh man, this is even worse than the Linux one. It's so bad. I guess the the the, the one on 
on Linux has been written recently, but so is probably raw input. I oh, know. This API could have been way better. Ah, uh, I don't understand how they do this. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. I just didn't. Uh, it's crazy. Like, at least standardize on something. I mean, have the non standard stuff, like, just be a bit. be extended on the end or something. I don't know. The API could have been way better. I don't know how they come up with this stuff. They make a super general thing. That fits such a very wide range of things, I guess. Um, but they do it in the most weird way as well. You're getting unsigned values from zero to some range, but you don't know if you have to have a logical range of minus one to one or zero to one. Yeah. But you don't know if it should be that. Yeah. Because um, it's just a raw value, isn't it? All find the get set bunnock system. Read the caps. Hmm. See, I was expecting that range, right? Like the the one on on the wait a minute. I was expecting it to be in this structure, right? Don't they have it like What's this logical min, logical max? Is it not that? You'd expect it to be here, right? Because that's the way it is in UDEV, or whatever it is. But it's not. Uh, why, oh why? The... Have the same values for the PS5 gamepad, except the data and C's in the usages, of course, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll take a look at it, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you're right though. Pretty insane. Pretty insane. I was, I was hoping to do a min-max, but I guess it's just not that simple. Right, we, we, we could just take a look at it, right? So let's just um get this thing in here. And uh, then... Uh, Right, let's take this thing for a spin. So the idea is that when we get into, you know, it could be any of these, let's do that. Uh, I've got the Xbox One plugged in right now. The Xbox 360. I've gone and buggered this up again. Right. So, Eight times four plus sixteen times twenty-five. Wait a minute. Eight times four plus sixteen Um anyway. So 16 times 25 plus 32. And then we just need to add one and then round up to the nearest. Right, so that's 440.
Tada. What are you done? Right, so I need to repeat that twice because we've got a pair. Uh, no biggie. So one is is pos positive, the other one is is not. So this would be action pair dot um, pause and neg. Just want to see what these values are. Do do. Do, do, do. Data index. Where did that go? Ah, uh, one of these. Very nice. Ah, uh, wants the uh, the VCs instead of the BCs. Redefinition of info. Oh no. Okay, so we've got a breakpoint in there. Let's take a look. So we've got the 360 controller plugged in. Let's have a little gander. So, so. Um, um, we're looking for that logical min, logical max, right? So there's that bit count is 16, right? So it's got a 16 bit count. There's one shift left 16. So that that's obviously, um, you know, 65,000. So if we look at this, you would hope it would say 65,000 or 32 or whatever, you know, um, in the logical min, logical max. It's just minus one. So maybe that means like, I don't know what it means to be honest. So yeah, clearly not helpful, which is a damn shame. So I, I guess, Um, I guess there is no way to detect it. I guess some of those other values could be it, but it's difficult to know. You have to go and read that hit page and it'd be very long. Right, so I guess we can just neuter the crap out of this then. Right, so we remove that min max. Well, yeah, you want to do another one where it's like, what is that max range? So I think you said you had the number of bits. Use bit count, and then you don't really use it anymore. So okay, we want like a, I guess we just keep a max. Um, Something like that. Um, we could do a U64. We don't know how big the value actually is. So that then it shouldn't really change. So we're looking at doing So for the buttons, the max is just one. For the axes, the max is the bit count. So U64 casted one shift left uh, bit count. 
Now, right, so it's fine. Yep. Cool. Right, so that should hopefully be everything we actually need now. Now we have to just do the read back code. Um, oh boy. So the idea is, so that's the device set up. That was much longer than I expected. Um, we should do the destroy code. So, um, and in Linux, didn't we do this? Yoink. We want to call the alloc. To the user, uh, okay, that actually releases memory. Right, cool. Um, and we're throwing in the input device backend um, pre parsed data. And the pre parsed data size and the alignment. Something like that. Cool, um, very nice. So that is the setup code done. So now when we read the input events in, which is somewhere up here, we've got this hid type hid here. So this will be the gamepad. We haven't got the joystick plugged in. So the idea, we get the hid device, do we do this on all of them? I don't know why we keep... Oh no, because it might not be... Right, I see. Yeah, we need to do this for... The the, the, the mouse uh, was fine, it, it didn't need to do this, but the keyboard and the gamepad do. So I guess we could assert that it is a gamepad. Right, um, so let's just do a quick core assert that the input device features and OS input device features gamepad. Ta-da. So what we want to do now is take a look at the sample code again, and we're going to have to do some to read in the inputs and then go over all the data values basically. And then we're going to pump out some events into the event system. Um, so where is that? So I'm going to do something like this again. Uh, I think we've already got this. Yes. Okay, we've already got this, but we need to do this now because the other, the mouse and keyboard already used this earlier. So we've already done it up here, right? We've done this get raw input data with this RID input. Oh, so we should be able to use this now. Bear in mind, this data array is a bit wrong. Um, we probably want to try and ask it how much it wants and then we'll just let it give us what it wants i think do a little custom allocation so i think it's that same sort of behavior right where you can pass in null maybe not um to determine the maximum possible number of data in get data. Okay, so we've got this one. Um, 
Right, so there's a report type input. Okay. So we can use this um, with the pre parsed data. Fantastic. So I'm not sure how good this is to do. I have it in the caps. Oh. Excellent. Thank you. So I should just be able to store that in my lovely um, structure here. So you want to say like max datas. Oh, I was mentioned in the docs, right? The classic skim reading to complete uh, and just ignore key information. Thank you. Um, I do that way too much. So, um, when we set up this thing, Uh, number of featured data indices, maybe. Hmm. So use OOP at work. Welcome, uh, Swing Funk. How you doing? Been a while. Um. Oh, input. That's the one. Um. No, we don't really use OOP. So at work, the code style is basically like, if if you get to make a file, you get to kind of do whatever you want within reason. Um. Basically, because. We don't really have a style, it's kind of like the MM way. Is everyone gets to have their own little like input into the code base basically. Um yeah, typically people don't do OOP sort of stuff. People do use classes. Um they use but typically people people don't use inheritance. Um so yeah, it just depends. So you know, there's pros and cons to the whole thing, right? The pros are when you write a file you get to have it your way. The cons are when you use someone else's code, it's not something you might not recognize. But typically, we we uh, kind of don't allow really crazy things like you know um, multiple inheritance or stuff like that. We we have encapsulation though in some places. That's why the number of dates is assigned to buttons and values in all input reports. This should be it. Now we see plus plus at work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm not not doing that job searching anymore. You know, that was that was a painful time. I'm I'm glad that's over. You know, the yeah, OCC plus plus, it's okay. Yeah, don't worry, man. You'll get you'll get there. Wait, why did I say Linux? Get out of there with that Linux in the Windows code base. Yeah, I'm I'm thankful to be happy where I am. Um but yeah, I can't imagine working a full-time job, family and trying to search for another job. It just seems like you need to basically take holiday. It just seems impossible. I don't know how people do it. Um 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 yeah, I think that's I think that's good. Um 
Wait, I'm in the wrong one, aren't I? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, here we go, input there. So the idea is that we want to have the data. So we could just, yeah, let's just temp allocate it. Data equals core alloc array. Um, yeah, one of those, what's the allocator, frame allocator? What is the count? So the count is in input device backend. Max data count, fantastic. Then you pass in, pass it in here. Now the idea Oh boy, look at that. Mm. Oh, these things. So glad I got this example code. I'm not sure I would have figured all this out. Right, so the idea is we want to double check because every time, I'm pretty sure every time, because that's the way the other ones work. Every time you call this, no matter what, it stores. Uh, on input, the number of, the number in the data rate, obviously. On output, the number of, The number of controls for which the routine can return data, which includes all buttons. Maybe not then. Okay. Hey, Mr. Shelby. Hey, Dim. Benoit, how you been? Right, so the idea now is it should be quite simple. We should just be able to iterate over all of our actions. This is the way we set it up. This is why it took a while. Because I wanted it to be it to be a simple way to do this. Gamepad action count. Right. So the idea is we have an array to get the infos. Or something like this. Oh my days. And then we can simply like do some things. So we should be able to grab the data. Let's call it D. Info data index. So it won't be linear, but it should be shouldn't be massive, so it should be fine just to do this. Um, so this has like a raw value and also an on field, but it should be fine. So we've got like a max value. Um, right, let's go to the sample code. Hmm, maybe not. So we kind of want to think if it's a button. No, no, no. Right, so we want ours to end up as a float from zero to one. That's our whole thing. Zero to one. Um, and, oh, it is. So we just encountered an issue where we found out that you don't know if the axis or if the binding oh my days if this raw value needs to be centered basically is it does it go is it unsigned or is it signed um all we know is the number of bits um so the way that we can assume this is if it is a we don't know. So I think in the action, we I think we could store 
boolean um, is signed. And you might think, how can you work that out? We're just going to assume if the action is not. Uh, yeah, we, we might have to assume it. So for buttons, we're obviously just just going to say false. And then for axes, fine, chill a bit. Awesome. Sounds cool. You ever tried a Vim emulator extension for Visual Studio? No, I've not tried it. To be fair, I think I tried one a long time ago, but I know you can get like a NeoVim one now, which is apparently like emulates it inside it or something. No, it's not an emulator. It basically runs it inside there instead. But yeah, um, I don't know. Oh, no, no. I've tried out the em emulator Visual Studio. Yeah, I tried that one. Yeah. Not the type of thing I would use. To be honest, because I've got a completely different Vim mapping. Um, and then for this one, so positive and negative. Sometimes it's not a pair. Right. So basically if it's not a, if it's um is signed is pair action pair dot pause equal to gamepad none or negative. So it's purely based on our bindings. which will have to change for every damn controller. Thank you drivers for not being consistent. Oh. Cool. Right. So that'll be super useful. So what it means we can simply do is just say okay so wait so the sample code let's go and grab the sample code because it does a pretty neat trick i think um oh wait a minute Did we not take the one? I don't think we took the one. We could do the bit count and do the shift in there to give it that rename. Probably better is that. To be honest, it's slight, slightly less data as well. Right. Let's hop back up to here. Um. No. You can't do that. You got to cast it. There's no suffix. There might be as an extension, but there's, there's no default suffix, no. Right, so u64 max equals d. Wait, info bit count u64. 
one shift left. Cost of that whole thing. Take one. Cool. So. Yeah, URL was not. Uh, yeah, URL might work fine. But yeah, the problem is it's not. It might not work on some other platforms or something. Yeah, it probably works fine. So we've got a max value. So we just end it with a max to sort of like. Yeah, so like. So do some drivers actually change that? That's, if so, that's bananas. I'm sorry, put some invalid bits in there. Scale to the target range. So our range is from zero to one, right? But we probably want to turn it into some form of like, so we'll probably make it minus one to one. But we could do that as a float. Wait, what should we do? Yeah, just turn it into, just divide by, yeah, so we just wanna say if info is signed, do it this way, else do it this way. Now, so we basically just wanna get the value and so we D raw value uh, oh wait divided by cast it into a float uh then you do wait that's the wrong way around in it Okay, well, what am I doing? So this value is going from, oh, wait a minute. Right. Divided by, something like that. Um, so that'll give you zero to one. Converts to zero to one. Then if it's signed, but then I'm gonna say value equals value times two take one. Right, so convert to minus one to one. Then We've got is negative. So if info, you know what, it is, is positive, but I want to just check what the, um, so this is the code we did on Linux. So it passes if positive. So there's a midpoint. Midpoint is always zero. We just did a pass based on that. Um, so. So we just have a midpoint. Hmm. Hmm. What's the way to do it? Hmm. 
Do, 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 do. So we could easily turn that into a, a midpoint and just check if it passes first. Um, or we could just scale the valley. If it's sign scale the valley, um, then you're just going to say if it passes, right? The midpoint is obviously just zero. Um, and then and then you definitely want to like flip it. So if it's not positive, we need to flip it. Um, but you kind of want to say So when we say it's not equal to none. So maybe should we we shouldn't really set these. Um. Yes, yeah, so if it's none, we shouldn't be setting them. Pull that out quick. Isn't max 64 bit and convert it to float might lose 60, th might lose 32 bits? Yeah, that might be a problem, but I doubt they are already that high. But we should, we should definitely probably try and account for that, right? Um, so maybe we should turn it into a double. And then work with that, I think. That's probably a good idea. Thank you. Um, right. So that was a good catch there. So this is... So we should probably make this an F64 instead. Double them floats. So, no point Fs anymore. Oh. Okay. So, very nice. So we'd only get Yeah, that's fine. If it's signed. Wait a minute. Can is positive be false even if it's not Signed. But you've spe specifically chucked it on the ne on the negative there. So it is signed. Um, should really be providing that. if negative is not equal to none, whereas this one should always be signed. The negative one. If you've put it in the negative field, then it should always be signed. Okay. That's good. Oh, confusing. So this would then mean that we can now fire off the lovely event. So that we can just simply do this. 
Raw gamepad action. This is all what I was trying to do. And voila. Um, so... Yeah. Let's take that for a spin and see what we get. Uh, we are going to have to bring over in our lovely terminal. And what we're going to do is open up that super lovely log file. So the log file is just a simple command a way. Um, wlog os input.txt. And here we go. So we've got the 360 controller plugged in. And I've messed up this size again. Isn't that amazing? Um, so that's three, three um, four byte integers, basically. Is this uh, aligned? Uh, so it's 12 times 25. Uh, plus 32 for these four pointers. Um, plus four. Plus the one. Round that up to the nearest eight. Which is... Three, four, four. Cool. What are we next? Um. Right, I don't have a thing called raw input in here. Damn it. Where did that thing come from? I've seen it around. We've got it here. Excellent. We can just use that. And right, so plop it in the data right there. There you go. Right, that's just called bit count now. But it's the same thing. Ah, oh, nearly there. Radio, so we've got it all plugged in. Here's the super lovely log file. Don't want to press the button. Absolutely nothing. Analog sticks, absolutely nothing. Um, so something fishy is going on. Do we land in... Wait a minute. So we obviously went through here. Um, and set it up. We can unplug it and plug it back in. So just did just say did just remove a three sixty controller. Right, we did plug that back in. And why is my virtual mouse being moved? It's like it's getting updates and it's like, hey, that, see, that's not good, is it? I thought, I thought we did a thing to stop that, you know? Um, let's quickly just fix that.
raw mouse. Oh, virtual mouse. No, 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 no. It was a raw mouse. Pretty sure it was a raw mouse. Just leave it alone. Oh no, it's a virtual mouse moved. Don't do that, please. That is horrendous. Vert mouse moved. So we shouldn't be updating this. Um, So, else, I gotta do one of those like all because it's a vector two. Excuse me. Right, so that shall avoid updating the mouse. Uh, right, let's bring in my mouse functions. H maths generics. Beautiful. Radio, so let's just quickly test that one. So if I just leave it alone, it shouldn't update anymore, which is good. Okay, so for some reason I'm not seeing anything. back up uh you know what this should really just go here oh no that's fine okay um yes yeah, so we're not think not seeing anything pop up so really what are we doing we should check if this gets called Right, so I'm going to press a button. It's called in. Uh, so it's not equal to a success for some reason. Um, and I don't know why. I wonder why that is. Okay. Oh, the max data count is zero. When did that happen? Right, I guess that this is wrong here. We'll look at that caps field and make sure it's the right value. All right, zero for some reason. Um, oh crap, I didn't change it to input. There we go. Right, that'll work. Okay, so we should. So we haven't handled the, um, I forgot what they're called actually, we didn't handle them. But anyway, we'll try it out now. Nope. Nope. Wait a minute, it's got to be a, there we go. Look at that. Things appear to be uh, be working, but I'm not sure exactly. 
Not sure exactly how much they're working though. So one thing that we did miss is we didn't handle the um We need to do a special one for the analog sticks or something. Sorry, the, the D-pad. We should really jot down on the D-pad. It's called a hat switch. So we just need to kind of know which one is the hat switch. There's only one of them. So we need to know the hat switch data index and we'll read that out manually. So when we register the device, uh, if it's equal to hat switch, we need to make sure that we store inside input device backend hat switch. Just like that. Oh, that is wrong. Sorted that out. That's good. That was copy paste bug there with that union. Don't know if they would have been in the right place to be honest. Oh. Oh crap, this meant to be a for loop. That's a that's a bug and a half. Shoot. <sighs> Silly me. I just deleted that code one time when I like copy and pasted something in, just like messed it up. Um, so really this should be here. Right, hat switch index then continue. Very nice. So now with this hat switch index, well, we haven't got it just yet. We need to go and put that in there just, in, uh, just quickly. Press the wrong button. Right, so here. So we need to add another four bytes to that. Size here. I'll fix that. Then in the event code, at the bottom here, we simply just, you know, the hat switch index might not be set. So really we should set it to like minus one. So we should really say, hey, if input device hat switch index is not equal to um, unit 32 max. That's what we'll set it to first, yeah? Right. So when we initialize it, we'll initialize it to that value there. Very nice. And now we want to handle it probably in a similar fashion to this sample code here. Although, yeah, maybe, maybe we will. It might not be as elegant though because of the enum. This is crazy, fair play. Um,
Right, so the way it's done here. Right, there's two bit, it's done as a bit set. And then it's turned into like. The mask, so it's kind of like boring them together. Yeah, that's just like oaring them together, basically. Um, and then... Pretty clever. Um, wonder if there's a simpler approach. Because the, the biggest problem is this can produce two button presses. Right. So what we might just do is just do a A and B. Set them both to none. And then just manually handle it. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll just do a switch. Do something like this. Um, so the approach I think we want to take is we'll just have an action button. Is an encoded angle, yep. Oh, your angle mapping is not correct. Oh. Right, so what is the angle? Okay, I guess we have to try it. You have a bug there, oh, fair play. So where, where, where is zero then? Is it north or right? Is it top or to the right? Which one is it? Um, OS action A and B. So B would just be set to none. Well, they'll both be set to none. Um, Maybe we can just test this out, I guess. It's not too difficult. I'll just test it out. Oh, you got it. Are you saying that that angle table can be different on each device? I Means nothing press. Nice. Sweet. That'll be good. Yeah. So I could do a lookup table for an AB. Um. That's the way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I might do two lookup tables and just declare it statically. Mm. So up, upright, up, upright, right. Uh, okay, it goes to the right instead of to the left. Yeah, I'm gonna do two lockup tables. So we have like an A B basically. Um Or it could have just or it could just be a switch. Uh
five, six, seven, eight. Nothing. Excellent. So um, we could be explicit about the storing. Um, so this one will be up. So D pad up. This one will be D pad and right from the. Okay. I can just test this out when we run it. It's no biggie. Right, so I drop these in here. Cool. So this one's up and right. Uh, two would be just to the right. Um, this would be down and right. This one will just be down. Uh, this one will just be down and to the left. <clears throat> then this one will just be to the left. And then up and to the left. Fantastic, thank you, thank you. So um, then we're simply just gonna do a couple of if statements and then just add add it in. Um, the problem with this though is if it used to be one value, so the problem with the D-pad now is we have to turn it off if it, if it wasn't on. Biggest load of crazy ever, but we can get that state. So the first thing we're going to do is change the state. So if a Assign one. And then beat. Now the biggest problem is, is like you can, you never turn it off, right? So you press on the D-pad, never turns off. So, um, what might be better? So, um, uh, So what's the way we can handle that then? So I guess we're basically just gonna do <laughs> like a bit set basic, or not even a bit set, just have up, down, left, right, and just do an else. Like, mm. just have, have a bunch of balls basically, booleans, right? The only issue is, is you don't know if it's been changed or not. Um, oh wait, if it's the same value, then return. We do that. Excellent. So we get the current value, put in a new value. Um, sure. So we'll just do F32 up OS gamepad, uh, action value, unorm, uh, input device ID. So we just get the current one that it is. So the action would be up. What order do we do? OCD here to the max. 
left down, right up. Sweet. So this would just be saying, uh, so bad. Up is equal to one. And then Ah, uh, okay. So up and right. Okay. That's good there. This one's just right. This one is just Wait a minute. Why am I getting the previous value? We're just going to be... Oops. We're simply just going to be... Okay. Right, just do that. So this one's simply just to the right. Um, yep. This one is simply down and right. This one is just down. Damn it. Big moth just flown in. Ah, and it's dead. Easy peasy. <laughs> uh just gave a good old smack with the uh, the wrist rest, you know. Take that thing right out. It was huge. Um, down and to the left. To the left. And then up and to the left. Voila. So now we're just going to call this four times. Right. So OS left. Oh, okay, maybe not. Gamepad left. Left. Down, right, up. Uh, nearly there. Okay, so that'll be plugged in now, which would be super great. So let's keep that going. We change this size. Is it still 44 then? Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, continue. So in this one we don't want to accept this down here basically I don't know we just leave it alone still nothing is set okay um right as a VC Uh, 
Okay, here we go. So now we can start trying this out. So let's start simple. Start with the D-pad. Up. Thing is, it starts processing all of those, like, analog sticks when I touch the D-pad, which is, like, super weird. Tons of other stuff come in as well. Um, we should probably look at the map, to be honest. Um, but let's just take a look at when we press a button for that. So we've got that sort of data lookup table. Data. Wait, it's info, isn't it? The info map. What we really want to do. So we don't land here, I guess. Let's get an event. Um, but we do want to. Yep. So I want to press a button. I want to put this in the watch window. Okay, so the data indices, what we hope to see, so not all of these are going to be mapped, and I guess some of them default to zero. Which is probably an issue, right? So problem number one, if bit count is zero, skip it. Okay, Pro problem number one. So press up. Wait, I've got to click on the window. Up. So that's still tr triggering some sticks. Um, which is kind of interesting. Right, I just need to be right back. I just need to quickly check something. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. Right, hello everyone, welcome back. Yeah, the baby is just crying, is just checking things. Checking things out. The wife. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing is, is do we land 
in here. Um, oh, bear in mind, these should all be initialized to zero, really. Um, let's sort that one out. That's real bad. Maybe, no, maybe it worked the first time, but then it maybe it didn't work the next. I don't know what was going on. Even so, we're just going to go and do this. And it will tell us what we're doing. So if I press up on the D-pad. Oh, we land here. What have we got? We should have an up. No. <laughs> we got absolutely nothing. Right, okay. Well, what did we get in the raw value? Three, three, two, four, two. So clearly, we didn't mask the bits. Right? We should be getting four bits. A bit count of four for some reason. Is that right? That was in the sample code. Yeah, so we should mask this with like something sensible. From with four bits. Value of eight means nothing pressed. Yeah. So is it just is zero to eight, isn't it? Really? So you probably should we just do like just four bits? Yeah. So something like that. First sixteen, please. I can't believe there's this garbage data in the raw value. I don't it's just such a crazy API. It's like, yeah, we we keep those bits un uninitialized for reasons. It's just weird. They're that low level. Oh wait, I got the wrong one. Right, up has been pressed. No. Oh, that was right, apparently. Apparently. What? Hmm. All right, let's just, let's get some live data. That same right, that same right, that same right, and that same right. Make up your mind. Um, Maybe a bug in the data interpreting slash getting data. Um, oh, sorry. Uninitialized. No, no, no. I only grabbed the first one. That was a uh, copy paste. That's what I should get for copy and pasting. Uh, rookie mistakes. Up. Right now we're constantly getting up. You can't use data index correctly. Oh, you can't use it oh, sorry, directly, rather, sorry. Huh? You have an array of values. 
All right, let's look at the sample code and refer to what's going on. So you iterate, so you get the data back and you iterate it over all of those. And you're seeing which one it is. Yeah, so I've done a little bit of a different way. Oh, data, data index. Shoot. Where did this thing come from? Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I see, I see. Oh. Really? Uh, yeah, because there are a bunch of input events. Uh, why did they call it data? It's the most annoying... Uh, Oh my days. This is horrendous. All right, so let's go change my lookup tables a bit. This is so bad. Right, so it can't be like this then. So we've um Um, so we might want another array now so this one probably needs to go data index to action basically To action map. We'll allocate that. Oh. Rocket science. Do, 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 do. Allocate an array, info, static allocator, please. Uh, mix with this over impact. Fantastic. Now we're filling that in just the other way around is all. <sighs> Windows. Right, so this time we're using the data index and rather than storing that, we store an OS. Input, wait, wait, uh, gamepad action just the other way around now the biggest problem is if it is a uh, it's not a big deal right so it's data index to yep you put the data index in there and it's action action cool so just repeat that here then this one gets repeated down here for the so we've got to be careful
Cool. Repeat all that. And then this one is basically this. I messed that up really. Pause. Negative. Signed is always true. Wait a minute. The date, oh my days, this has got to be a pair. The rub, um, oh. When's the max value in the end? Bit count. Yeah, that bit count shouldn't have gone. Yes, yeah, so we store an action pair in there now. Oh. This be action dot positive, and then negative is. OS action none. So that is positive thing needs to be worked out. Uh, right. So basically, you just set the action. Oh, it's action pair, isn't it? Pair, pair, pair. So now we set action pair to action pair. We no longer have to care about setting these positive or anything like that anymore. And we just set this once. So it's just action pair. All right, very nice. So now we need to get, we need to sort out this data thing again. So we should do what we've done. What's done in the samples. So it's already, oh, it's such a weird thing. We'll just call it index. Um, and then what you want to do is get that data. So let's call it D. Um, um And then there's another data index in D. So for that, we can get this info map and that gets you a pair of actions out. Oh, gamepad. So we want to do a bounce check on that, I think. Is that right? No, no bounce check. Right, I forgot. We do need to make sure that we allocate that and deallocate it. We'll come back to this. What? Shh. 
Alright, it's a better name. So we allocated this, but we didn't deallocate it. So when we remove the device, we need to make sure that we dealloc this lovely thing. Um, just need to put the existing pointer in there. In these nuts, oh yeah. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, man. Okay. So, I need to take a sip of water. This is... Ooh. So, We've set up those action infos fine now. I think, at least. Okay. So... This is where the fun begins. So you get the data with a data index, but inside the data there's another data index, and that is the one we've used to get our actions. Now our code below is kind of fine, but we kind of need to duplicate it. Um, no. Um, yes, we reuse it in here, obviously. So we just need to check if it is... Um, So there's a pair of actions, you get a pair of actions. And we do that same trick where we say Boolean is signed. So it's signed if it has a negative. Um, yeah, it's signed if it has a negative basically dot pair neg something like that so you've got your data you've got your max value you work that out you convert to 0 to 1 if it's signed you convert to minus 1 to 1 now it's passed now there's two different um, possible actions now. So basically, if it's signed, you've got a chance to do two, but if it's not signed, you've got a chance to do one. Wait. Now, there's always a chance to only do one, but you just get, you just can flip it. You just have to. Um, yeah, you have to test two of them. So you say if value less than zero. One thing else is the other thing. So this would be action dot neg for negative and you just flip that like that. This one is positive and you leave it alone. And the else statement will just be for now this one you, you just need to make sure and say else if um, value is greater than zero But you wouldn't have changed it anyway. So it would always be greater than zero. Which means you'd always trigger that. Uh, 
and voila. It might be better to put that on one line, just so that copy paste doesn't get, you know, that's not an off by one character difference. Um, so the problem is now is the hat switch, right? That's the one thing we've missed out on is the hat switch. So how do we get this to work? Um, so we could just do an if statement in here, but then it's going over the whole data and it checks every time. Um, Yeah, that's fine. So what we're saying is if um how do we want to say this? So first of all, if info bit count continue. Because it's not been initialized, if anything sensible. But it should have been. But anyway. Then up here. So if the hat switch has been set, it will be. Um. Yeah, I don't like the idea of sticking to for loop when it's only fired once. But. But maybe we can just no. All right, hat switch. Hmm. It. Yeah, it'd be fun. So we're indent this, stick an else in there, uh, and then just put all this code in here. Cool. So that, that should be it. Just got to probably correct that structure size constant um where's the pair down here cool it's a little bit off got to recalculate that again so it went down from being you know i can't work that one out um so it's uh pair is two by yeah so it's Eight bytes times twenty five plus thirty two plus Oh no it isn't actually it's even cheaper now. Um so it's forty four eight fifty six should be. because we moved all the data out from being inside the array to pointed to elsewhere. It's now cut, allocated manually. Cool. All right, let's try that out. <laughs> uh, info action pair. Oh, come on. The alk array. There's too many. 
Ability. Oh, oh we're not on deallocate rate yet. Right, let's correct that. That one good. Sweet. Um, allocate a pointer, allocate account. Why didn't that work? Member. Oh, did I put it the wrong way around or something? Oh. Yep. Allocator always comes first. That should be fixed. Okay, so we're back in business. So let's test all this out now. So up on the D-pad, up, didn't release for some reason. And those aren't working either. Um, right, so things are allowed to be pressed, but they're not allowed to be released. We're not getting released events for some reason, but they're able to be pressed, which is decent. Um, and they seem to be coming through correctly, on at least on the Xbox controller. Um, so what, what's, what, what's going on? If they're not present in the report, then they're considered release. Oh no. <laughs> uh... Oh my days. Uh... But thank you for that. Thank you. I would not have found that. But yeah, I'm just thinking how I'm going to factor this code now. Um. So the so problem is we go over all the data and, you know, I guess we can keep a bit set to know, say, know which ones that we've set, which actions have we set, uh, which are contained in this report. And then we go over all the actions which are not and we just basically unset them all. all right, that's one way of doing it. Um, we can do a nice, nice loop for that. It's not too difficult. It's one extra integer that's kept around, right? Um, that works. Uh, what else? What other way can we do? Yeah, it's 25 of them. So we fit that in a nice integer. Off you go. Um, do we have that sort of Lisa bit, you know? Yeah, I need to include some coffee. Well, I should probably not. I'm going to bed. Soon. It is around 11 p.m. But I do want to get this finished, you know, so. Yeah, welcome Magic, Magic Horus. Um, do we have that sort of like reset bit? Wait a minute. I have it in my mass library. So we can use that. So I think that's probably the best bet. There's no good way of doing it. So we, we, we're going to use a U64 um, because just in case we add more buttons, I don't want it to break. So actions, actions found equals zero. And what we're going to do is if you find an action here, we're going to say action
Action found. E64, one shift left. Info action pair dot oz. So there we go. So we're just going to all those bits in there. Okay. Then for this one, you want to all all of the bits on for um. Yeah, it's the UK. Mm -hmm. do, 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 D pad. So left, down, right, up. We all those bits on, right? And then all you want to do is simply I'm in the for loop there, get out of there is do an iterator so you flip your bits so I could just iterate over all of them but there's a nice way to do it you basically want to do U64 um, Actions not set, not found equals and not of actions found. Then we say while actions not found. And at the bottom of it, we say actions not found equal and equal actions not found minus one and then your bit index so bit index which gives you the action so the os action action equals can i have the bit least significant bit I think that's what I could call it. Yes, that's what I got. So you just use his um, count trading zeros or bit scan forward. So on this, we take in a value. Okay, so that starts at 8 p.m. 8 a.m. today. Okay, Russell, good to see you there. Thank you for coming. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next stream. Have a good uh, day tomorrow. Right, so we get the next least significant bit, then we remove the least significant bit, right? Now I've got our action. So we can simply just do this. Pretty sweet, right? There you go. So that way we're not just scanning over every bit, we're just scanning over the bits that are set, right, in that bit set. And then removing it. Bam, that'd be sweet. Well, let's go. Try it again, press up. Uh, what is going on? So obviously that's a none. Is that a none that we did? Oh, what about bits that are not set? Um, right. Problem is you flipped all the bits off, so you need to and. Wait a minute. Works some magic. So the idea is we will kind of want to like only keep the bits. U64, one shift left, um, game count, 
Yep. Uh, take one. You're only keeping the bits on which are included inside the enum. I think that was the problem. Right, let's go. Up. Then I released it. Nothing happened. Damn it. Expecting to be landing in there, eh? There's none, we didn't care about none. Five. Five. No, five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, so it would have touched the up, down, left, and right. And it's clearing these up to zero. Right, but it didn't come around the next time. Wait a minute. It's got to come back around. So if I press a button, like a D-pad button, it will switch it on the first time. And then if we didn't get another event, it's not going to register it. So I've tapped it on, I hit continue. It hasn't come around to do another event yet until I press another button. So it's assuming it's down the whole time. That can't be right. No, that can't be right. Right, let's try some in, let's try some in out. So if I hold it down, I'll hit continue. And then I'll release it. Right, it showed up again. Still the same index bug, could be. Pretty sure I fixed it. Yes. All my days. Yeah, so I think what you was referring to is No. Wait a minute, I'm confused. I'm confused, I'm confused. So, index. Right, you never index directly. Oh my days, that shouldn't have been in there. Oh, so maybe we don't need this thing in here at all. Wait, let me comment that out. Maybe we don't need that thing in there. That was a good catch. Up, release. Hmm. I don't know what was going on there. That was weird. Hmm. 
So let's put some, let's put a breakpoint in here and see what it gets. So that was an up and a right and a down and a left, apparently. But I don't think we've got anything that came. Th right, my mistake. Well, oh, that went too fast. Right, so for some reason the right didn't get. Oh, so on the release, that's what I want to check next time then. On the release, only the right turned off. Hmm, let's follow it through. So hold up. Um, this is a one apparently. Okay, let me go again. Did nothing, I release. And now it's saying a zero. Right, see so this thing gets set. Uh, if usage equals hat switch. Um, data index. I think that looks fine. Is it the D from here? So you're definitely using the raw value. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, right, what else could it be? I guess we can test it out. Right, so up. Right. Well, it's left, actually. Right. The right is thinking it's like all of them on. That's really weird. Yes, up. How's it thinking that all of those are on in some way? Something wrong with the lo logic, maybe? The whole right. Um. <clears throat> And it would turn up on for some reason. Ooh. Yeah. 
is on. Right, it got left on. This should be changing that to zero, surely. Um, let's take that off. Right, turns it off. Okay, I read it wrong. Right, so up stayed on since I pressed it up for some reason. Um, right, it's going to be good just to print out the raw value instead. So let's do a core log debug. Um, core log tag. OS input. Um. Is it you long? I just realized this is not a 64 bit number, it's a 32 bit integer, isn't it? It's a long. On Windows is 32 bits, so this doesn't have to be 64 bits. Okay, good to know. Something to correct at least. All right, so up is a value of one. Zero is center apparently, up. The diagonal is, to is two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. So apparently it's, it's actually different to what you had no deal with for some reason. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be working. So zero is nothing, and then it's off, it's off by one, basically. So... I don't know why that is. Six. Try the PS5 gamepad. Oh no. Which means it'll be different. Uh. means the solution I'm writing cannot be kept. Right, up. Uh Oh, eight is neutral. Up. Right. Why? This is really bad. Like, this is actually really bad. Can you believe that? Yeah, the userland driver approach is okay, but like, at least with this one, you can have some config files and user users can set them up, and send them in and send them around. But still, <sighs> right. So we need basically a lookup. Right. So it's basically off by one, you know, uh, between 
this the 360 and the PS5. And it wraps around, right? So eight is zero on the PlayStation or is zero is zero on the um the Xbox controller. So how are we gonna make this agnostic? Well basically what you wanna do is have some form of table. And you need to store that table inside your mm, So you've got nine, uh, wait, is that right? 10. No, 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 no. Zero to eight inclusively. So it's, yeah, it's nine. Uh. So you need, basically you need two bits of information. No, you need four bits times nine. Ooh. I was wondering if you can pack it into like an integer or something, basically. Um, but yeah. Do, do, do. The four nines are 36, right? Maths. Um, so you need 36 bits. You can pack into a 64 bit in. Um, Do some shifting logic and then remap it into this basically. Um, and then you, then you can just do a bunch of checks to see if the bits in there, and then just set it that way. Yeah, that's what, then, then then you can avoid the switch statement. Um, yes. So. You can pack into one sixty four bit in. Let's do it. Um, yeah, so I don't think we need any of this anymore. Um, but let, let's this U sixty four thing that we've done needs to go. It's a thirty two max. Uh, we'll keep it as a U sixty four anyway. Um, that's fine. Okay. Right, so what was everything we needed to do? So basically inside the devices, we want to store a U64. And this U64 is going to be the hat. Got it now, hat something. Hat switch. Right, so this is basically like a two, wait a minute, four bits. Four bit element array with nine entries. None of that. So, Let's write the usage code first. Very easy. Right, you got a left. That is going to be, you get your raw value. Mask the super lovely bits. Right. So U64, wait, U32. Um, let's call it V, I guess. So this is going to be your index okay so you're trying to shift out do you want to use 64 bits i guess that'll just be inside the input device backend and you want to grab that new thing called the hat switch map and you want to shift right by whatever V it so V will be zero to yep shift right by that 
um bearing in mind there's two there's four bits so it's times four on that and then you basically want to keep keep the four bits only and there's your bits so uh, you, you don't really have to and it here but we're just going to and it anyway so then left is basically bits and zero that no, and one sorry question mark one zero and then you basically just repeat that and this is what i want to build to solve that problem so and two and four and eight voila that's what we're going to build so we just need to build a couple of lookup tables right xbox one playstation one so the 360 controller is going to get um so it's just a 64-bit in so really it's just like 0x so um how we're going to do that can be a bit cryptic. So the first four bits, so luckily it maps to hex really well because it's four bits. So really, we can just check here. So up, right, so up is eight. Up is eight, very nice. Um, so if up is eight and right is um, four, it is the combination of those. Uh, which I don't know too well. So there's 12, whatever 12 is in hex. C. There you go. Good old C. Right is 4. Nice. Um, 4 plus 2, that is 6. Nice. Get rid of all these now. Um, down is two. Yep. Down and left is three. Down is two. Down and left is three. Uh, left is one. Left and up is nine. And Wait, is that right? Yeah, left and up that awesome. So one, two, one byte, two byte, three byte. Four byte. Oh no, there's an eight, isn't there? An eight in this case is zero. Five byte. Sweet. So that's your Xbox One. There you go. Three sixty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another array and we're gonna name these proper now. So this is uh, you know we could make these little text files, um but then that's just more effort. In future, though, we should make those text files, but we'll, we'll do a 360 one, we'll do a PlayStation one just as an example. Um, and then we'll change these out to be 360 or to be um, read from a file instead and read the files off the disk and do it that way. Um, we'll, well, we'll store them in memory probably. Yeah, so we'll probably store them in memory anyway and then look for them. But yeah, that's just too much work for today. So we want a default button usage. Um, so this would be findings x360, Xbox 360. Um, uh, what about so this would be DualShock 5, I don't know, uh, it's DualSense actually, isn't it? Um, PS5, let's just call it PS5. 
Um, right, so we want another one, and this one's just going to be an int. And this is the um, the hat switch map. So hat switch map PS5. Oh my days, this is crazy. Okay. So there's our lovely number. So 360. Um great, so we'll define that in a good place. Uh, let's go and find a let's go and find this one. Yep. So this is all like three sixty or whatever. It's no longer got the name default. Ooh. I wanted to remove that default prefix. Let's sort that out. Nice. Um, so we wanted to remove that default. And then we want to tack on the end Xbox. Cool. We'll start there. Now we also want to throw in um hat switch map. To do have a user configurable That switch map no because they are different we know that so you know what I can't be bothered to the PS5 or can I no we should do the PS5 as well maybe okay Please write virtual com for Windows, then I'll copy shamelessly. <laughs> what is a virtual com? Because I know there's the com modules. And the hey there, Ron, how you doing? Oh, these things, man. These things. Right. So that's, that's pretty neat. Definitely got rid of that switch statement. Still. Should be a bunch of C moves there, which would be good. And we made it bigger, people. Bam. Radio. Give it a test. Oh, yeah. Oh, the PS5 controller's plugged in. What a piece of work. Here we go. Oh, I've got to click on here. Right, up, then released. Oh no, I forgot, it was all completely different, wasn't it? But the beauty is it's just shifted one to the left or right or whatever it is. It's not hard. That switch map. So zero goes here. That's all it was. Can you take a look at the value cap structure for the hat switch, please? Yes. Oh, we'll do that just in one second. Up. Release. Right. Release. Left. Release. Yep. 
down release look at that right so I don't know if we're getting up and right. Oh, we did. We did. We did. Up and right. I saw that. I saw that. It worked. Right. That's good. We, we'll test some more stuff out in a sec. We're going to check the... Um, I want to know if there's any hint about how to interpret the hat switch. Can you imagine if there's like a mask like that? Right, so the value cap. This one. It's a similar effect device like a virtual keypad or virtual modem. Ah. Well, you notice there's an absolute flag? Interesting. Is absolute as one. So you're thinking that could be used for the uh, way to interpret the data for the um for the analogs, right? Min max. Look at that. There's a min max. Right, so if I plug the PS5 one in. And maybe that works. Still though. Yeah, because how... That's true, because how the hell does this work? Yeah, because how the hell does this one work, basically, right? Because they do it here. Right? Okay, that makes sense. Right, so we don't need a hat switch... Um, thing. See, there's a range though. So does that mean the range could be zero to four? You know what I mean? That's not good, is it? It could be... It could be up, down, left, right. Maybe. Hmm. But then they would just use D-pad if not. Strange. I don't know what to do to be honest. Because if we use that, we have to assume it's eight in size. And if it's not eight in size, then what do we do? Then it must be at least four. Um, but I could still keep the hat switch method though. Um, let's try this. We're going to keep this constant still. It's really cool. I like what we've done. Defined as an angle, right? So maybe we just shift it left by the min. Wait, but the mink be super weird. <sighs> so, what I'm thinking is maybe we can just do.
But then the problem is, is the logical range. And just assert that it's eight. But we're only seeing zero and one right now. You could just subtract the min, that's a good point. And then you can use this magic number. Yeah, hat switch min. That's a good idea. Then we can use that magical number. <laughs> I love I did did that whole sort of like optimization for like really just a configuration thing, but now it just looks way better. Um, you need to check if the range is zero to seven after subtraction. If not, then it's unpressed. If not, then it's on rest. Zero to seven inclusively. Yes. So then it's it's an E thirty two. That's right. What you're saying is Hey the meatball. Are you are you not going to do a map between directional key combinations that are pressed and resulting direction? Um directional key combinations. I'm not sure what you mean. Um Yeah, so this one, um, the reason why there's multiple keys being pressed here potentially, up, down, left. Yeah, see, it's only because on the Xbox it's got like, you can press a diagonal and it's actually down and left. Um, and that, that's what this code is doing. It's just that it's nothing to do with like combinations of like keys over time. Is simply like what are pressed together because the way it's expressed in X input is is via this way, which has been really dodgy. But yeah, it's, it's all right, it's just silly. So, really, really, we want to subtract the min. Um, hat switch min, and then if the less than seven. Wait a minute. No, because it you have to, right. Mm. You assume they're all off, isn't it? If it's not set, we can do that. If less than seven, less than eight. Ah, uh, screw this thing. You got a hat switch map? That looks crazy, but cool. Are you doing it frame? Oh. Also, what is the gran granularity of a key press that is? What is the minimum duration that a button can be pressed? 
I use it in frame by frame. What is the accuracy precision of each key press? Yeah, I, d I don't know if I can give you any good answers, to be honest. Um, are you talking about when you sort of, when you press a key, what's the time for it, for it for you to get an event? Oh, good point. Thank you, thank you. So what is the latency for the event, is that what you're saying? Um, okay. Try that out. Debounce, what's a debounce? Oh, there's too many bells and whistles everywhere. Um, 40, wait, yeah, 40, four, eight, 60, 64, mate. What are you talking about? One, two, three, four, five, so five, eight, forty. Four, eight, fifty-two, fifty-six. Right. Wait. Yeah, I was saying something really dodgy there. Maybe it is fifty-six, or it's sixty. There we go. Is that in some of my code gen code? Oh, I don't have the static cassette. Oh, it's so I don't um Yeah. It's a bit silly while you are while you are in a like a phase where you're tweaking it a lot. Um but it's basically so the data can be inlined with the so the back end. So anything outside the system doesn't know about the back end. So the Windows back end of the OS subsystem, for instance. Um, but we have this thing called input device and the whole back end data is like inlined next to all of this. And we basically cast this into this Windows back end implementation. So it has its pros and cons, right? The pros is it's next to the other data. So you're not chasing pointers you, you, and, you, and you only have to allocate one piece of memory. Uh, the cons are you have to tweak this number all the time. You can obviously just make it a huge number and then come back and fix it up later, but yeah. But as soon as it's been done, it's, it just stays and there's no problems with it. Um, no, we're assuming that a key press has been recognized correctly and the event handler has been pushed the message into the queue. I don't know what if the game's probably gonna be real time. I doubt we'll do anything very. T I don't know. We could could be turn based. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna have any delay. Um, but I think we'll just process it frame by frame as soon as we get it. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to figure that one out. But if, it, if it's played over the network, maybe we might have to introduce some delay. I'm not sure. Depends, entirely depends on the game. Want to make a shared structure with the first member of the O-specific device? Yeah, it's because I don't want to... I don't... The first member... First member specific device. Yeah, um Yeah, I want to keep the back end stuff independent, you see. That's that's all it is. Right, that seems to be working good. 
Okay, we'll try it on the other controller in a sec. Um, they're saying why south when I go up and north when I go down. North and south the wrong way around, we left and right. West, east. Good. So we'll flip those around. So there's a table. Um, June rendering. Uh, Tempest is simple. Real time is where everything is. Hell regarding key press timing. June rendering. Do key press messages get handled? And are they queued until the render is done? Um, so right now we're just doing a very. We don't have any multi threading um, at all. Uh, but yeah, we do have a queuing system. So as soon as we start the next game frame, we read in all the events from the operating system. We put them in, into our own queue and then we read them off um, and we process them all until we've flushed out the all of them from the operating system and I think they get stacked up in the OS I'm not sure I need to research into that oh you can just cast the OS into the shared one right yeah but the problem is is right so what you're saying is you need to allocate right I, I see what you're saying so you you'd need to dynamically allocate the os one yeah the problem is is once we have to say size of input device and just get get it because this is using my object pool and it's like an array of these elements I don't have a, a, a size that's determined at runtime if, if I'm reading you, you correctly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of you're switching between the back ends. That's a good approach to do it. But yeah, and this one is, is static, so. The granularity is one frame, so it matters if it's pressed before the render. So the granular is after the frame and it will be rendered. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about the technicalities of that though. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I can provide any good answer yet. It all depends on the problem I'm facing when I'm programming. South, east. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's looking good. So what about this other analog stick? South, north, east. One won't be quiet. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's looking good. Cool. Um, face bun A. Let's say in East. Wait a minute. These guys got to be quiet, you know? They're noisy. Right, so if I press the face buttons. So is that that thing where you're saying no idea where the face buttons, if you press them down, they will show up, but they're assumed. If they're not mentioned, they're assumed released. <sighs> Luckily I kept that code in. Just write down on paper the events as they happen from the moment you swap buffers from frame n until swap buffers of frame n plus two. You just single threaded. 
Yeah, but I don't know what, what problem is it trying to solve. I don't know if I'm if I need to solve this problem just yet. What's the issue? You think that the absolute flag is off? Interesting. Absolute flag. So we can drop a breakpoint in here. And we should be able to see what it is. Yeah, I probably will bump into it. But yeah, thank you for um uh for uh checking. Nowadays. What am I doing? Um, I need to press a button. So I'm going to press the face button. So it did land in here. Um, oh, it goes through there. Signed is true. Why is it a neg? There's a negative? Oh, this would be the analog stick, probably accidentally firing. Right, it goes to the next one. Maybe the analog stick again. Right, this is probably the button. That makes sense. Um, so many analog sticks. Uh, let's just continue there. I could not figure out what's going on. Um, so it'd be good to just log out. Uh, call log debug. Um, call log tag. All right, let's give that a spin. Got an extra new line in there. Uh, Wait, what, what are we pressing now? Face button. So it's coming through twice. When I let go, nothing happens. So what, you suggest, what you're thinking is, is that it could be an um. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. It's the one that you plug in. Um, is it called a Power A? It's just a standard Xbox Elite controller. Oh. Um. No, you know it's the black one.
So you're getting two fives coming, two five events. Um, so we should check to see when five gets set in the button map. Oh, one days. So I guess we should say Um, call breakpoint. That'd be good. Oh, it didn't even trigger, which means it must have happened in here. Okay. So is absolute is one. Um, so range is what? Oh no. Um, bit field is two. It filled as two. Is that what it's used in the us oh, bit size? The no, mm. right, it's a different thing. Yeah, it's coming through twice though, which I don't get. Hmm. But sh is that right? Because it's firing two times when you press it. Oh, right, right. And then when you release it, no other event fires. So you won't be able to detect that it's off until the next event comes in. Yeah, but I think when I released it, I didn't see anything. Let's double check that. Um, so the check we want is like we want another one to say like gamepad and something like that yep right so if I press this down ah you're right you're right very good so for buttons the absence of them will mean off. So it's only for buttons though. Why is this API so bad? Did did they write this without run any usage code? <laughs> Horrendous. Right. Um I'm getting super thirsty, so I just need to run down and fill up my lovely glass of water. And then we'll come back and we'll fix that issue. Two seconds. Where's the tunes? Keep them going. Hello there, welcome to the stream. Enjoy the tunes.
Ah, right, welcome back. Oh, that was noisy. Okay. So, um, yes, the abs the absence of, so we do need to keep this thing in, gotta be careful, where is it? Yes, this action is not found. Now we kind of want to ignore the ones which are analog sticks. Um, is that right? We want to ignore the ones which are... Right, catch the dinner. Thank you so much for the help. Appreciate it. Uh, see you in the next one. Um, yeah, so I think maybe we just mask out the buttons uh, and mask out the analogs. I think. I think that's a good shout. Hmm. Um. Something like that will do. So I think we just want to like also mask out. So just keep, yeah. So we did this nice little thing earlier. Um, that should that ought to do it. The only issue. Oh no, we've done it there. That's good. Right. That should be good. Okay. Oh yeah, so face down has been pressed and released. That's good. Sweet. So I think that's the 360 controller done. We are going to check it. I just want to get rid of this here. Oh yeah. I just wanted to get rid of that silly print thing. So we'll give it one, one full blown test and then we'll uh, do the PS5 controller and that should be controller stuff done on Windows. So Shoulders. Why? These are mapped to D-pad up for some reason. Why? Is that true? It comes in here as a pair. Did I do that wrong? Why is it coming here as a pair? Oh no, this is the sticks. Um, how do we tell this easily? Yeah, it came for as a D-pad. Why did they? Why did it get mapped to a D-pad? Right, probably because that default table we had. That's why. We can get the numbers though quite easily. Um, gotta find them. These guys. 
Yeah. Right here. Here it is. So we can use this to tell which one it is. So Cool, so five, five is that one at the shoulder, six is that one. So uh, shoulder left, shoulder right. So after that we've got uh, so triggers don't come up. Um you've got the face buttons, you've got the shoulders, you've got the sticks, right? So click the sticks in. They're nine and ten. You've got start select. Yeah, start select. Start is seven. Start select. So I guess you don't get the guide button. The guide button doesn't want to work. I guess that's you kind of ignore that. Right, so that should map correctly now. And then we'll do the same for the PS5 and the PS probably PS4, but maybe we can skip that. All right, shoulders, sweet, trigger right, trigger left. You can't hold, if you hold them both at the same time on the 360, it's buggered up, but that's because the driver is terrible for the 360 controller. If you see this thing here, look at the Z-axis. So if I press them both in, it does nothing. Release one, it puts it all on, release the other, goes off. There is is tied across one dimension. Horrible. Really bad. I cannot believe someone wrote that. Left stick in. Yep. Left right stick in. Yep. Let's go off. Good. Um. Start. Select. Buttons. Isn't that amazing? So, 360 controller done. So we kind of want to get PlayStation in as well. Um, it's a little different, but we'd be able to do it. Uh, we shouldn't have to plug much in, although we will need to figure out what their what their vendor IDs are and stuff like that very quickly. It should be really easy to plug uh, to get it sorted out. So we need to put a breakpoint when we attach the device, and we need to find that super lovely um, vendor ID and product ID. And then I guess we'll just ignore any other one. Or really we just want to do it for the PlayStation. I don't know. We can ignore any, any other controller for now. Here it is, vendor ID, product ID. So we'll, we'll jot down the numbers for Xbox and PlayStation. So, We'll do it in super lovely hexadecimal. So, notepad, vendor, product. Uh, so that was the 360 controller. 
so what we want to do have this all user configurable as the game drivers are different. Um, so we'll just jot this in here like that. Cool. So we're just going to go ahead and not initialize these at all. And then if, uh, so we've already added the device here, which kind of sucks. Um, that's not what I want to do. Uh, what I would prefer to do is skip adding it at the moment. We'll move it up here. So if the vendor ID equals 0x045e, right, it's just 16 bytes each, and the product ID Um, Xerox says the three hundred and sixty controller. There we go. And the other one is we've got a now do the PS5. So we're going to else say return zero. To do um, uh, what we're going to say we kind of want We kind of want to let the user know to make some mapping. Um, so either the user needs to make some mapping files or we get them to press the buttons on their controller somehow, which is kind of crazy thing to do. That's, that is a lot of work to do. Probably don't do that. Um, so anyway, let's plug in that PS5 controller. Right, that's plugged in. So we should be able to hit this breakpoint here. And what we'll get is the vendor ID and product ID again. Yay, so that's 54C. So 54C and C E6. 54C C E6. 54C C E6. 54C C E6. Six, there we go. That's the PS5 controller. Now we should be able to get a lot of this sorted out of it without even plugging it in and, you know, going, checking it in, in here with these breakpoints because that would be silly. So because it's plugged in, we should be able to do this lovely thing here. where we there we go so we get all the buttons here basically so all we need to do is go to these arrays and sort them all out are they declared no they're not 
no worries, we can do it. We go to the 360 ones and we copy paste them and declare the uh, PS5 ones. Cool. So let's go and press some buttons. So base button X is two. So square X circle triangle. The square is right, down is X, then left and up. So right, yeah, right, down, left, up, good. Um, shoulder right, the shoulder left and shoulder right, yep. Uh, these come through as buttons as well. I don't want to map those. We'll map those to a none. Because PlayStation likes to map the buttons, the the axes as buttons as well. Like it's weird. Oh wait. Yeah, trigger left. Ignored as this is an axis. Not a button. Um, so, yep, nine, ten. Um, that share, so it's the other way around, select start. Uh, there's still a bunch of buttons left. Oh, touchpad is over at 14. It's still, I, I'm not sure I'm to map that one. Right, 11, 12. 11 is left, 12 is right. It's good. What is a 15 then? PlayStation is 13, we're not mapping that one. Huh. It's reporting it's got fifteen, but it we're not I can't find the button for it. Oh the mute button. <laughs> the mute button is fifteen. Oh it is, okay. That's funny. Uh we'll leave that out for now. Right, let's get these analogs in. Um, Rx The trigger is X I know right, just cost 6 hours Yo, I really want to get this done in one stream I'm doing okay I just wanted to get this all done in one stream because I wanted to move on to UI next and get off of Windows, you know? Uh, so we're going to do some UI rendering next stream. But yeah, I do have... Um, I, it's fine, I don't really have work tomorrow. So... Just be, I'll just be chilling at home, so I've got, I got, I got time to rest. But yeah. Fed up for Windows. And also just would like to put a pin in this input stuff, you know, because we've been working on it for like 11 streams now, but we've sort of done Windows and, 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 uh, and the little, and, oh, I'm getting so tired, barely speak. <laughs> but yeah, we've done two platforms and it's been, it's been great, but I just spent 11 streams on it now and it's, it's kind of time to get doing some stuff because we've got 
a nice GPU layer that I want to try out. But an OS layer now, we've got some core like custom allocation stuff, collections like stacks and object pools and a hash table. We've got a load of good stuff we can start using. So I want to start using some of it and building out some, uh, uh, building out, um, a system for UI. Um, and then after that, we can do some graphics, uh, do some proper 3D graphics, which would be good. X is the left trigger. That is a none. Uh, that's a right trigger. That is a none. Then you've got oh no, those are rotations. Dude, so those were right. These are the rotation X, Y, S. Yeah, man. That means a Nick Johnson. Incredible. Um, right, so these two. I think that's right. I'm in love that. So the right X is on the perfect. That's it. Right. So we plugged that in. That should work. Um, or it's plugged in. If we uh, run it, it should work. <laughs> sleep is sweet, yeah. Nah, let's, let's go get stuff finished. Best fair play, you went to sleep when I started and stood here. That's what it's about. Um, Here we go. This is it. Right, north, good, south, yes. West, yes. Right, yes. Um, Cool, so let's get this stick. That's saying why? Oh no, east. East is good. West is good. North is good. South is good. Bam. Right, down on the D-pad, up on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad. Combining the two, up and... Pretty good. Right, we're not doing the touchpad. Screw the touchpad. Because on Windows, it likes to be difficult. And that's to not be a good driver, basically. Left shoulder, right shoulder, trigger left, trigger right. And unlike the 360 controller, for some reason, it can do both at the same time. Revolutionary. Um, and stick in, stick. Very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, triggers are analog, they always are. It's firing a nun though. A nun is not good. Um, you should never fire a nun. Um, it is. Super close, super close. Ugh. Um, see, so yeah, it shouldn't fire none. If action equal none, and I'll fix it. Very nice.
Man, I'm thirsty. Go on, let's give it a listen. Right, let's jam. Right, so we've now completed the controller stuff, which is super great, but there's a few more, a couple more things I want to fix on Windows because it's not, it's not good, right? Which one is it? This one? Okay, so the control st stuff is now done, but there's a few more things which are buggy. Oh, see, it's this one, the trailer. Somewhere like that, yeah. Okay. So it's because of this gamepad stuff. Because we've done that now. Good. The problem is now is we move we move the window, it just doesn't. It crashes and everything. So I think we're not handling some events. And I think it is. So if I do this, it crashes. Last time I lived it, I don't know. I uh, typically never do that, I don't know. I'm not sure if you remember the PS3 controllers, but those things, those sticks just melt. And they just melted. You, you'd leave them and they'd just like, get all this goo on them all of a sudden. It's like, what? And in the PS4 ones, they kind of... They're a bit better, but... They still kind of get some form of like gooiness on it, very slight amount. But the PS5 ones, pretty good. Yeah, I think we we don't have like a moved a window moved event or something like this, like whereas we used to. So we've got to like put it in the the handler. We'll chuck it in. Yeah, this will be it. So I think we're not doing this. Is this the is this the album you're talking about? Uh, so when it crashes there, it messed up my shift button. Ugh, horrendous. Sometimes I have to boot up like the on-screen keyboard or something. I can't even get it to work. All right, I gotta copy paste now. And program. Is there a window? There's a window moves one, yeah. I can't even press shift, so programming is a pain right now because it crashed and died. So basically, we want these. Okay, so we want to do like an S32 times 2.
That's called sessions, isn't it? Why don't they have it on YouTube? That's the problem. They don't have the music on YouTube. Seems like they're quite small. Band that doesn't want to be on YouTube. Or hasn't bothered. Right, it's a high word of vertical. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. There goes that. Oh, come on. Get that extra one of them out. So that should be the window move one. So window move shouldn't crash anymore. Right, that's the other actually handling it. Well, it shouldn't be breaking. That breaks the build. So we move the window. What? Else the array size fails. So we're not got big enough. Is my event queue not big enough? I'm not sure how big my event queue is, it's probably an issue. Right, let's make that way bigger. Let's do 1024. We got the memory right. Okay, so now this doesn't crash. Is it not processing it? If you hold it for long enough, it doesn't. It cues. There's a problem with the raw mouse, basically. Um, we could say, if you're moving. Like, I don't understand why it does it does that, to be honest. If you move it, and then let go, Says it crashed. Okay, we got stack trace file at the end of the world. They got a log. And it's basically saying we crashed in the 
Ähm. How can you fail here? All right, it fails here. I thought we, we should have got a trap anyway. I should have done a, a, a break point. When it crashes. We've got a special thing that goes on. I don't want to say the debug is attached. Break point. Yeah, I don't know. To do if debugger attached. Well, we could implement that on, on in the back end. Pretty easy on Windows. So we'll just do a quick, quick and dirty one of these, yeah. In the OS abstraction, we just want to say OS. Boolean OS is debug debugger So we'll implement that in Windows and we'll leave it for Linux and when we get back to next um, next stream we'll uh, get this code base up and running again on Linux which shouldn't be too hard and uh, just add in a function for that I'm not sure how easy it is to be honest I'm sure we've broken like a few things because we have been working in Windows. We might change one or two things. So if the debug is attached, we break. If it isn't attached, we display a message block. Right. Okay. Isn't that a cool idea? So here we go, hit the breakpoint. Bam. So you hit this assertion. Right. Got a study Visual Studio bug as well. The problem is the previous count is equal to something and it's queued up many events at that time. You gotta put an instruction there and it's dodge. Right, so now I can actually see it because the Visual Studio debugger keeps doing that, you know. Thank you, appreciate it. Welcome to uh, Waleed.
Wait, how many are in there now? Wait, who can read Hex? Nobody. Now it's 16. There was 14 that went in. Let's just say like 32. Maybe it's not going to be legit though. Seems proper. Yeah. Seems proper fragile, I'm not going to lie. We probably should just make it like be a ring buffer and just make it like huge. But I don't, I don't know why you're getting like thousands of events. Like if you hold, if you hold on the, the fact that the window is moving, it sort of like locks it keeps receiving mouse events. Win32, window moved. Bam, or something like that. There's a moving one. We get, we get mouse event spam in raw input or something. That's what happens. Uh, Yeah, I get a loading cursor. That's what we was getting because we crashed. No, that's different then. I don't think we had that no legacy. No. So we've got this event queue. Fixed sized. It's filling up. Due to the mouse moves or something. It's firing tons and tons of mouse move. Um, and not allowing it to finish until you let go of the window. So there is a moving event. And there might be a moved. Right. Then after it has been moved and there's moving. Right, so I guess while it's moving, do don't do anything. Don't process anything, it was the window's being moved. That's what we'll probably have to do. Spread that out. And that way all this stuff will be fixed. So, this one here. So, is moving equals true. Now, here's what we want to do is like default to everything. Go to default if it is moving and not moved. Like that. At the top, it's super dodgy, but if MSG. 
it, so static it bool is moving equal false if is moving and msg is not equal to then we go to default um, so we then want to make sure that we set this to false again by equal to move sorry I got that wrong Very nice. So let's give that a. But then the issue is you're just going to get a ton of raw input stuff just read. Um, maybe not. They were called default. It might have got rid of it. Yeah. Um. Move or moving. So it's moving the same thing. Uh, moving a pointer to the rec structure of the current position. Right, so that's not really good because it's just a pointer. Uh, so we just ignore it. Well, not really. You kind of want bottom and left. Hey there. Having said it, work outside of games, kind of want to get a. I just graduated and don't know what dev jobs I want to apply for. Games would be sick, but it seems like a significant pay cut forcibly. Mm. Well, the question is, can you work outside of games? Have you tried development outside of games and do you like it? If you don't think you can do it as a day job, that's great. And also, we have enough spare time to work on games. Um, if you want to do it as a hobby, if you were to work in the right industry, or in, in, outside of the games industry at least. Um, I guess those questions are questions you have to ask. Um, But yeah, um, you know, the pay, the whole pay thing is completely different depending on where you live, basically. Um, it pay depends on like so much. Um, just judge it for yourself, really. Um, but yeah, like for me, I just really like doing what I enjoy all the time. And for me, at least, that's not the same for everyone. So I'm just saying this is my own thoughts. Um, for me, at least, when I was pro, I, I can't. I could do web development, but then like, it just really drains me, and I kind of like just hate the whole thing because I'll be programming and there's just no joy in it. Um, and then I'll be thinking like, but I could be doing game development or whatever and actually learning something and expanding my skills or doing something that's challenging for a reason and not challenging because of the BS 
of web development stack web development stack or whatever um or you go and work in a c sharp job and it's full of oop madness for like no re well because the language is oop by default um but yeah that stuff But anyway, my opinion. Um, it's just not really compatible for me. I just love working in games, so I would just prefer to do that all the time. Um, yeah, no worries. And then it crashes. Oh. So I was hoping we're hitting this, right? Right, we're hitting that. Do we hit that? We hit it. And then we stop hitting it. Why, why do we stop hitting it? And then when it's equal to move, it's like, we're done here, mate. <laughs> I wanted it to be done. I don't want it to keep queuing stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the problem is it'll keep queuing window move. Oh. That's what you kind of want it to do, is you want it to not stay in the, the loop of being moving. Because that's the issue. I've never done this before. There's probably a way to change the config of it and it If you act a window but did not, but it didn't work, don't move, move in now. What the living crap? <laughs> Did he really go into destroy when he moved? Um. <sighs> Full and death. Still death proc. Maybe we should be calling death proc as well. I have no idea. <laughs> this is so laggy. I wonder what it's doing. Oh, it's keen a bunch of window moves, that's why. Absolute crazy source. There's Q and a bunch of moved. Yeah, I guess we can just do this. Because I'm queuing tons of events over and over and over again. That's the problem. And it doesn't break outside of the event loop until it's finished moving the window. So it will just keep saying moving, 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 and it never stops.
and it never it never breaks out from what I remember at least. Or well, that that's why I'm thinking it is. We could test that in a log. Where's our lovely main? Right. Drop that in there like that. We should see that render frame. If we don't see render frame pop up when we move in the window, then it's uh, obviously uh, not doing anything. It's freezing, it's not doing anything, let go. It's not escaping the loop when you move in a window. Um, moving freezes. Freezes game or something like that. Or... It never it never escapes the event loop. To continue to generate idle messages, typically create time. Oh no. Uh, is your event, event is not being run, your window being received is. No, 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 I don't think that's it. It's getting stuck inside the event loop somehow. It could be so, to do with some other events that we're not picking up on. Sent one time to the window after it enters the moving or resizing modal loop. This is it then, I guess. Modal loop, when the user clicks the window tile bar, when the window presses the Oh, what a load of BS. They just get stuck in a loop. Right, so we take this. Exiting the modal loop. Right, I don't... I'm bad coder. Yeah, I'm a bad, bad Win32 programmer. Screw this thing. Horrendous. Expect you to do real work in it apparently. Oh my days. So bad. So we've got an enter and a move, and I guess when you call a def proc, it then goes inside of like an infinite loop calling moving and move all. Right. So we could keep this Boolean thing going. But then you I can't do these events and it's really annoying. So my hope is to literally disable this in some way. Go to bed, go to bed. Nah. Um, so let's try and like get this and then just return zero and just see what happens, but then you won't get any moving event. Right, you won't get any of those, maybe. Because surely that happens in the def proc.
that does some render frames. Freezes, stops. Oh boy. That is very weird. Nah, that's fine, man. Brennan hangs in window. Yeah. I could just ask someone on, on my Discord if it gets stuck on it too bad. The uh, I want to try and solve it, you know. See, SDL would have solved it, and I don't know if they have the same problem. Main thread is what when the user resizes and moves the window. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna just bail on this one to be fair. Well, yeah. So I guess I'll just fix this problem off stream. Put fix in. Or maybe just leave it until we next come onto Windows, perhaps. Probably a better idea. Undo all of that. I have no idea how to fix this bug. Probably the same for resizing as well and minimize. There's one for minimize as well. Right. We do want to, is that WM move? There we go. So at least we've got the controllers working today. That's what the aim was. I'm happy about that. That took a lot of time though. Not a fan. Not a fan of it at all. Uh, right. So the next stream will be on Thursday. Oh, we're going to be doing some, going to be starting a new system. Um, see so yeah, stay tuned for that. Right. Let's find somebody to raid. If anyone's even gone. Right. Thank you for coming, everyone. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Right, have a good um, rest of your week, I guess, uh, tomorrow, today, whatever it is, and I'll uh, see you all on Thursday. Uh, cool, catch you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.